So, we're here, four creators, we've all played the alpha, I know there's a lot of, a lot of FOMO going on, but I thought we guys would give our opinions, discuss the alpha, and also what we expect from the beta. So first and foremost, guys, general impressions of the alpha. I'm going to take it to the lost and now returned with a sexy fuck beard, Frito. How you doing? Hey, everybody. I'm back. Hairier than ever. Um, the FOMO, I definitely feel right now. And I played it. So I think that's like a really strong endorsement because... I miss playing it now actively like everyone else does. And I, I don't know how, how we all feel about it, but I, like trying to jump in back into Overwatch 1, it just, it feels like a, so much worse of a game for so many reasons. We'll probably get into it, but like Overwatch 1 feels like a mess. And I'm like, why would I ever queue for this again? And so, yeah, I, I'm missing the, the alpha and excited to get back into the beta and actually make content for this game again. Good to hear. Good to hear. And we'll take it next to my man Samito as Flat struggles with the uh, text writing. I'm not very good at this stuff. I mean, look, I was really impressed. As Frito said, you know, it, it's very hard to go back and play Overwatch 1, especially comp. Like, a quick play with friends is still, like, I, I think that if there's anything to take away from Overwatch's one, Overwatch 1's lifespan, it's that they, the way they did quick play and, like, casual play is just really solid all around the board. Um... You know, I, in my time, like, in, in the industry, which I would say I really started, like, a little after I turned 18 back in Minecraft, I, I played a lot of alpha builds, and this one was by far the best one. I think that you you see a lot of learning from the team. You gotta give them credit. You know, I, I thought it was really solid. Now, I, I didn't get to play as much as I would have liked, because towards the latter half of whenever it was up, um, I was traveling for lands in, in, in Kentucky or just planning stuff, and, and, you know, it is what it is there. But, you know, all around the board... Got to give him credit. I've never been happier to be wrong um, in my life, I don't think. Um, so, you know, it's just overall, it's it's just great to see. It's a great experience, and you just got to give Blizzard a lot of credit. Flats, how you feel about that? What level of honesty do we want? Entirely. 10 out of 10. 100%. Okay. Well, well you're not going to get your paycheck if you don't say something nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, keep going. Uh, <laughs> paid actor. Paid actor. Oh, oh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 the alpha was great. No, I mean, two things. One, to speak on your point, Frito, about Overwatch 1, I have been so, uh, I don't know, irritated, I think is a good word recently, because I, I've, been, I've been having some good times with like YouTube and stuff recently, and I've been getting a lot of people that come in, and they go, oh, like, you don't look happy. You don't, you're not smiling. You're not happy. It doesn't look like you're having fun. Well, I'm sitting there playing Overwatch 1, I'm playing Hog Sigma against like Echo, Echo Mercy, uh, or Brig Zen comps with like Echo Tracer or something. Like I'm basically AFK standing there when I know what's on the horizon. I can't talk about what's on the horizon. I am telling you to have faith that there's this, there's like a good game on the way and like things are going well. Nobody believes me. Everyone is sitting there <laughs> pointing at us and going like, "No, you don't know what you're talking about." dumb tank player uh i can't i can't articulate why i'm i i'm excited for things in the future but i'm also frustrated with why things things are right now which is a normal thing to be to have uh and 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 being able to be like oh when i end my stream after eight hours and i go play this other thing for four hours and a full 12 hour day i enjoy the other four hours and i wish it could be 12 hours of just enjoying the other thing but you don't know what I'm enjoying because I can't tell you. So that, I think that's probably the biggest part for me that I've been happy with is finally we can kind of like unleash all of this of like, you know, like we've been stuck here not being able to say anything for forever. And I hope that it kind of restores a little bit of faith uh, that, you know, people being excited for the future of Overwatch is, you know, come with good intentions. Yeah. And I Same. Think Go ahead, Brito. Nope, that's it. I just wanted to that's say it. same. Great rant, Flats. Continue, SV. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, like, I think that's one thing. I think I, I feel fairly confident speaking for all the content creators out there that say, we're sorry for pretending like we didn't know as much as we did, but we didn't want to get sued. So uh, mm -hmm. I know it wasn't a great feeling. And maybe actually we can just quickly elaborate on that because it's been a bit of a weird time, I think, for watch content creators having played a game that we have to pretend we didn't play and we don't know stuff about and 
you know, stuff is coming out about like Doom Fist and Risa and we've played Doom Fist and Risa and we have to kind of pretend we didn't know. So was it kind of a, a moment of dissonance for you guys with like your community and like Flats, you said you're happy that it's finally over and was it kind of a difficult period? I'm going to take it to Sam for this one. Um, I feel great. Obviously, as one of the more prominent Doom players in the community, that, I mean, I did pick up Doom a lot later than most of these guys did, but um, a lot of people were looking to hear my thoughts on, on Doomfish as a character. Like, can they actually get him to be a tank? Is it going to be good for the game? You know, you guys get the whole spiel. It, to, to emphasize again what Flat said, how frustrating it was streaming the game to the point where I was just like, I'm, not, I'm just not going to stream for a couple weeks. I'm just going to take a break, come into, the, come into the beta with the right mentality, and not lose my mind at this can game I I've say, been streaming for four years. Yeah, I go, go, cut go. you off. No, you're like good. to see everyone's reactions of like, oh, I'm gonna take a little break for a little bit. Oh, I'm pulling back a little bit. Oh, like, <laughs> I'm just saying, laugh my ass off because like I know what's happening, but no one can pick up on it. Like, there's so many things that happen mm -hmm. at the same time because everyone's recharging because everyone's ready to go. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, I'd say it's and, and, and it's the right decision. I mean, especially like I could sit there, queue Overwatch one, be lagging because I gave my stream PC away, which tilts me. Then like just kind of playing the game in general is just kind of tilting it's just it's just not the kind of content that at least me personally like i want to do going forward so it's it's it was a breath of fresh air that i feel like the community has held their breath for two years maybe even more than that i mean you could say back in blizzcon 2019 there was still i mean frito we were there there was still like a lot of doubt about you know i remember we sat down we had dinner with with nate and and eddie i miss eddie tell him i said hey by the way good dude um and we were just like, what is the idea behind this? And I feel like there was just a massive <sighs> exhale of three years of just troubles, just being able to be let go. I, and it just felt so good. So I think a lot of the sentiment around the Doomfist players actually has been positive. I think a lot of them were doubting, rightfully so, about how Doom could be played because playing a tank uptime is so important. And if your abilities to get value kind of rely on passive value as a tank, you're at a big disadvantage to begin with so i think they did a great job of keeping him proactive keeping him in fights the doom players all love it i think my community loves it so far though obviously they haven't gotten to play it yet so all, all around the board i think th that sentiment has been generally pretty positive i'm not sure if i answered the question i went off topic a bit there but, no you you, um, you start yeah. you started with the answer and then you gave us some nice additional uh, context as well which i appreciate mm -hmm. uh, i'll take it to frito although i know frito you kind of were didn't get to play the alpha as much as you like to would you maybe want to elaborate to chat why why that was the case if you want to mm, not really um yeah i don't know if I, that, that is really relevant i'll say for the viewer's point of view though like the thing that i'm kind of struggling with as a creator and hopefully we can um maybe figure out in this podcast a little bit is is trying to describe why like like the once we play it it's like your sensory input as a gamer or or what you receive you kind of figure it out kind of quickly, right? Like, oh, the logic of the game works like this. I'm supposed to go here. And you we kind of have a very intuitive sense of that. Whereas a viewer of content, even if they're watching the game, they might not be able to get the sound cues or the context of everything. And I think, like, the thing I'm so excited about is that I know with pretty big confidence that when they add new characters to this system, when they make balance tweaks, when, when something's like wrong with the game or whatever, I know, I'm pretty confident I know, I'm pretty confident I know that the worst it could be is still pretty fun. Whereas in Overwatch 1, we know what the worst could be and it looks like things in the way and you can't engage with the game and a long list of not options. Like, like there's like Overwatch 1, this is why it was so much of a struggle for me to even attempt to boot it up again, is because I'm just bombarded with all the extra abilities two tanks feels so oppressive now. Like, there was so much discussion about how two tanks is foundational to how we play the game. No, 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 no. You have no idea how oppressive playing against two tanks is after you play against one. Because the beauty of Overwatch 2, to me, is that, like, nothing feels that oppressive. Even, even when it's really strong. Like, it might be the best thing. Like, we, we've seen broken heroes in the alpha. But even when that was the case, you still could move and do, execute, Execute your own thing. Sorry, I, I'm going on like a, a, a wacky side rant here, but I've just been like tossing up a lot of the uh, feedback that I've been getting that I've been surprised to see. And it might be my failure to communicate this, but a lot of people are like, well, it sounds like you're excited about Overwatch not being Overwatch anymore. 
But to me, Overwatch was never supposed to be. You have to hold hands in perfect concert with your teammate to do anything. That doesn't mean teammates de uh, teamwork's dead by any means. Like teamwork's still important. It's just Overwatch Two. You don't feel like one toe step in the wrong direction is insta kill death, and that just makes me really happy to play every character. I like playing all all three roles. It's much better. I don't know. Like that maybe a a foundation for this conversation to be uh, built on. But it, it's like I, I feel like we're all like really excited, but we gotta all remember on this show that. None of the viewers have played this game, and I, I'm still struggling to like explain why I like it so much. I think people will get it once they get it a, a chance, but um, maybe there's like um, a gap in the communication there. For um, while we're we're all kind of on the same page, right? And remember, like we were we weren't all sold on it immediately, right? But I think uh, safe to say we we all are at the moment, anyway. Yeah, and I think it's definitely difficult as content creators, like I said, because I know a lot of people listening are already a bit like. I'm annoyed at having to listen about what Overwatch 2 feels like and not be able to play it myself. When, you know, we kind of hope, I'm sure it would speak for all of us again, we kind of hope as many of you get to play it as physically possible. Like, I think every single person, I hope every single person listening right now gets to play. But what is it, and as Frito's kind of led us nicely to the next question I was going to ask, is that what is that kind of feeling of Overwatch 2 that's getting you guys so excited to get your hands back on it again because again we are we can't play right now we have to play overwatch one and kind of frida alluded to his pov oh. flats you kind of alluded a little bit to why it felt so much better but do you want to maybe go into a bit more detail especially on the tank pov why it felt better uh well i just was i'm, I'm not I, i'm not playing overwatch one i i i think i've yeah, I put that down for the season. Uh, I, I think I'm not going to taint my own experiences because I'm already ready to go. Um, I already have enough content. I've got 10 videos coming over, over the next four days. Uh, I've already released four. I'm, I, I, I ain't got time for it. Um, <laughs> that being said, uh, yeah, the tank experience is very different in Overwatch 2. Um, and I want to say that with a little bit of caution because people are going to free and go, oh, what do you mean it's different? Well, I would say the dynamic of matchups is a little bit different than it used to be. Um, I would say like, you know, everyone always just think like tank difference, tank difference, beating the other tank. Uh, there's actually not always that's the case anymore. Um, now it's actually uh, a little bit more about what your play style is. And there's multiple things that I found that work. Um, the example I used is my play style is ultra hyper aggressive go kill everything before they kill my team, um, which is one style. And then there's what I refer to as Emong style, which was like the diva player who's like more protect the back line, play slow, um, you know, enabling other people to do things, not like go into the enemy team and get as many kills as possible. They both actually worked uh, as long as your tank player was good enough. Um, because if I could go in and kill five or four, like realistically you wouldn't kill their tank because, uh, the tank role is actually much beefier, um, in Overwatch 2. I know I, if I put out a video yesterday, like showed like that most of the health pools are, are increased by a good amount. Um, but also with one less tank, that amount of incoming damage is significantly reduced. Um, you'd be surprised how much having not an off tank or a main tank, like, you know, having that second tank you know laying into you actually helps out uh because you also got to remember that you still have two supports you know and uh th that healing is pretty good you know like only having to focus on one tank that of course they can do other stuff and they have to realize that you know i think support role is really going to turn into support role where you're going to realize you're going to do more damage and more enabling and abilities as opposed to just you know raw healer uh that's a lot of especially like metal ranks play um but I've noticed actually there was sometimes where I just straight up ignored the other tank and just went to do other things like go like kill, go support backline, etc. Um, and I and I think that was a very different experience because in current day Overwatch, uh, diffing the other tanks is kind of like a mentality because if you outplay their tanks and you're you know you're hitting the big shatters or you're constantly pushing them back on double shield or you're the initiator on on like the ball or dive comps, you're typically going to beat them out and you'll enable your team to win. Uh, in Overwatch 2, it's not totally like that anymore. It's like enabling, of course, first still matters, but it's not tank diffing anymore. It's like it's kind of team diffing. And uh, I think that's why DPS players will significantly like the the alpha because I or the beta, I mean, uh, because I noticed that um, 
you know, everyone's individual plays was more impactful. Uh, it wasn't like overwhelming tank gaps or anything like that. And I mean, I, I, I saw it many, many times where uh, I either played like a game of support or I played a game of DPS and they had a Overwatch League tank player and we had an Overwatch League DPS or and support and we would easily beat them. Like it wouldn't even be close. And like normally that wouldn't be the case because that tank player would be so much more dominant in the in the team environment as opposed to um you know just to like one dps or one support player but it actually everybody felt like like they had a lot of impact and i think that that'll probably be people's biggest concern but also love with the game yeah and i really want to get into the support question because that's something that i've already seen a lot of people reacting to so we will definitely dedicate a good amount of time to talking about the support thing and a lot of you guys are concerned but Sam, on the tank front, let's let's since we've kind of sp- sparked that discussion on the tank front. Obviously, you mentioned you do do main tank now. Uh, check out Sam's guide. Already teaching you guys how to play tank Doom. How did it feel for you? It felt great, and I'm not talking like not even the Doomfist. Believe it or not, playing Rhine felt great. Like I, I was very. And I think this at some point we should also talk about 5v5 because I think that yeah. this is a point that I'll tie into that. I'm not going to get into it now, but you know, I played a lot of Zarya, I played a lot of Diva, I played a bit of Reinhardt. Uh, I didn't touch Winston too much. I played a lot of Doomfist. Um, and I was really impressed. Like, the nothing felt aside from Doomfist slow, which I think got changed. Like, the difference from even Bap and Brig didn't feel oppressive. Which is maybe that's because we weren't playing it in, in the proper environments, right? But like all of the things that in Overwatch One felt like they overwhelmed you, like Orisa and Sig stacked together, just isn't in the game at all. And I think that the way they went about it was honestly brilliant. Like uh, their Orisa rework, I think, is really underrated. It's super fun. It's not oppressive, and I think it's going to take time for the community and the developers to really figure that out. But everything felt good. The game flow was fast. A push was awesome. I love push. I mean, sometimes it can feel a little dragging as you're going way back and forth, back and forth. But it's better than 2CP. And just tanks in general, it just felt like the game was more in your hands. And I think the way that these guys summarized it up was was great and that the individual impact is still there. Like, the individual impact has come back to the game in a very fair way, and team synergy is still there. Like, Doomfist Dive was really fun for me. Like, you know, that, that was kind of like my, for me at least, and again, this is more so my style of play for Doomfist. Like, my style of play for Doomfist fixed the tank fist a lot more than, like, a lot of the rollout dooms you see on YouTube who still are going to find a way to be rolling out quake as like an 18 minute rollout guide already that kid the first day it came out quake and i were in a discord call together just like going over everything i think he he was a little late to get it or something and so like i was in discord with him while he was on nda getting the access like talking through be like so here's what's changed blah 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 like there are a couple rollouts that i hit with like the punch cancel like i just it it and maybe you guys can help me elaborate on this what made original Overwatch feel so much fun is like the map, the map, every map you played felt so open. Like it felt like there were so many options and opportunities for you to be a playmaker and nothing overwhelmed you. And I got that same feeling playing this alpha for the first time playing Overwatch since October 2020, I think was the last time I felt like, hey, like I feel like I can make plays on anything. And obviously we will have to talk about supports. I think some cooldown reductions will fix most of the problems. Um, but at, at least in, in, in playing tank, every tank I played felt fine. The movement was great. Everything was important. I felt like it was the game that I fell in love with again for the first time in a very long time. Frito, do you want to save that statement for later? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Frito, did you want to elaborate on, yeah. on the tanks and then take it anywhere you want to? Yeah. A, f- a few things these guys brought up made me think of, uh, more comparative things that, I think you will begin to realize, or any of you who get access to the the beta coming up, but one example is that the focus fire of the game is so much less punishing. Like Flat said, when the enemy has one less tank, but also the oppressiveness of all the abilities, so there's less abilities, but there's also one less guy. Whereas in Overwatch 1, the way the maps were kind of designed, when they have six players, 
the first thing to walk out gets a bombardment of abilities and damage and everything in front and you just die. Whereas Overwatch 2, because of the maps are bigger, but also because there's that one less tank character. Remember tanks, they have like often infinite ammo basically, or like really heavy hitting abilities at close range. Whereas when a bigger percentage of the enemy team are squishies, but also one less player, it's just less things that let, like destroy you, right? So like as so as Flats was saying, I thought it was pretty cool that there's both playstyles with aggression or more appealing if you want, but the stuns that come from the enemy team come from the enemy tank. So it's not like you're surprised when like like as Winston, I, I think you none of you played as much Winston as me, but I thought it was awesome playing Winston with the railgun. He's not even that strong of a character, really. But what you can do is you can charge up the railgun ahead of time as you dive, like, or start poking down a brig and then overwhelm her. And I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> Wait, <hold laughs> on. My, my my brain is exploding. Wait, you mean like there's a brig there and I don't have to be like fearful of instant death against this little support character? No, you don't. And that, that's the way it, 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 it was in Overwatch 1. And our brains have kind of, I think, been um, attuned to knowing there's instant death around any corner because a McCree could just flashbang and, and fan the hammer and you're dead. There isn't really ways to do that. Now, that will develop over time, I think, with mastery. And something that at some point I wanted to bring up is like, interestingly enough, um, it seems like a lot of comps are being attempted at the owl level. And I think once we all start to see the players who've been like grinding the team version of the game, we're really going to start to see the, the depths of heroes, uh, or, or, or comps, I mean, that are, are better than you would have thought, uh, or better than I would have thought for sure. Um, I think the standard meta of the game is it does look a little deathmatchy, but until we start to learn the cover positions and how to tr transition a Reinhardt from cover spot to cover spot and play a death ball style. Like death ball feels kind of difficult um, with randoms who just learned the game. But as we start to develop that, like it, it just, all, all these are fun things basically for me. So I'm trying to like uh, combine the, the last few statements, but it, it means like the, all that seems to make sense. And I'm excited for the variety of gameplay that we're going to be able to get, but also the interactivity with it where even as those things get solved, I think you're still going to feel like you have options. Whereas in Overwatch 1, the RPG builds of the comps, as I like to call, oftentimes was just like, well, this is just stronger and we can just vaguely put it on the map and you can't engage. Haha. -ha. Like, like that's sort of what it felt. Whereas with Overwatch 2, you just because there's less tools for your team comp, you're going to have to have teamwork to make it work. Whereas I, I think people are really getting confused, at least by, in, in my video, excited about there being less teamwork. Um, you're still going to need teamwork, but you'll need to execute a thing as opposed to just picking it and vaguely standing together. That's the thing that was so annoying in Overwatch 2, and, or Overwatch 1, rather. And that would happen a lot on a lot of different maps where they go Orisa Sig, and all of a sudden they have this super-powered fire tank line where they can just vaguely look at the choke and the first thing that comes through dies it's really difficult for anything in overwatch 2 to do a thing like that which is making me so excited so anyway i i uh no, randomly brought... scatter shot a lot of ideas there no, so you brought up a lot we'll, of good we'll things i kind of want to uh, yeah you scatter arrowed <laughs> it was and ricocheted twice <laughs> <laughs> what i was going to say is that i think you brought up a good point which leads to another discussion topic which is i think a lot of people have said i myself including that Overwatch 2 feels more deathmatchy. Uh, and I think that this term is quite loaded in a way. And I think a lot of people interpret that quite differently. Now, the thing about playing in something like an Overwatch 2 Alpha is that there's so many little things that I think, again, are difficult to translate in words exactly that kind of add up. So like you mentioned, the lack of CC a little bit, right? It kind of, it just changes your mentality as someone engaging, like in, approaching an engagement. Because... For example, you know, I'm used to like staring at a screen and if I see a Cassidy standing there, I'm, I'm afraid as a tank player. I'm afraid of, of going close to that guy because I don't know if there's a flash fan coming my way. But now to have that kind of mentality change, it's just like a slight change is part of all the other things that, you know, having one tank and having X ability reworked, having X ability reworked. So I think there's definitely that element of it, the lack of CCs. But some people hear the term more deathmatchy and they are alarmed by it. So perhaps maybe you guys want to give me your definition if you agree with the idea that it's more deathmatchy. And if so, in what way do you think it's more deathmatchy? I'm going to take it to Sam first. 
Uh, we can go to, has Flats gone first in a bit? I think we can go to Flats. All right, yeah, we can go Flats first. Down. Yeah, sorry, I don't want to hog the mic, so y'all will do, do our rotations. Uh, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to lay it out flat real quick. Uh, the people that look at the footage, though, like, I don't, okay, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying that if you look at the footage, how do you, we look at that and then look at current day Overwatch and not think that current day high level Overwatch is just deathmatch? Like, <laughs> High level current on Overwatch right now is very much deathmatch. Like we are literally playing deathmatch right now. Like it's like genuinely, I think there was a little more team play <laughs> in the alpha than there was in live because people cared. Um, that being said, I don't disagree with the statement that it is a little bit more deathmatchy. But however, though, that's kind of what happens when um, the game removes that extra tank because. You needed so much synergy, not only between your tank line, but the rest of your team to deal with the double tanks walking in or, 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 or pushing in on you or pushing them out that you needed that synergy to push them out. Like it was just a lot of uh, it, it was more beneficial to work together to move that really hard force to move that really hard object, which was two tanks, as opposed to now, which is more or less uh you, your tanks can deal with each other. Like one tank is actually, uh, with only one tank having CC, they both can fight each other head on very easily. But regardless, they actually end up not doing that that often because it takes too long. And it's like the damage and like the CC is more effective on squishies anyways. So that tank isn't being a movable object anymore. It wants to come towards the back line, which means that like, you don't have to worry about the chokes anymore. It's a more dynamic fight where they're trying to engage on you or trying to retreat from you, and you're trying to push into them instead of that standstill, steady warfare that we kind of have on today's meta, or even, you know, especially if you see, like, double shield poke comps, uh, you know, even rush sometimes you can kind of have that problem where it's like you're trying to rush through a choke, but they're also running rush, so they're holding that choke really, really, really hard bunched up. Um... But I, it's kind of just what has happened with the 5v5 system. Um, and, I, and I definitely think there's some challenges that might have to be looked at. Like, for example, like an escort who pushes the cart, you know, like uh, that's sometimes even a harder question to sometimes have now because you normally would have one of your tanks go hold space and then either your off tank holds point or one of your sports holds point or whatever it might be. Um, but now, like, you you have to have the tank mostly move up um, so it has to be someone else that does it, typically like, you know, support, DPS, whatever it might be. But those are challenges that will be solved with time of playing. Do you think Do you think in 2016, when we were playing original Overwatch beta, we were figuring out who do we put on cart? Oh, like, we we're figuring out how many right clicks of Cassidy we can get off per minute and how much damage mm -hmm. it would do across the map with two Lucios and two Winstons. Like... You know, those are things, those are complications and changes that'll come with time. Like, they're gonna... Yes, it looks deathmatchy now, and I don't disagree. It felt deathmatchy. However, though, when we played some scrims, I, Ryan didn't feel that good in ladder play, but in the scrim play, I was unstoppable. And that's not a flex. It was just the truth. Like, it, when you when I played push, which, by the way, I'm putting a video out tomorrow because, like, everyone's been saying Ryan is bad, Ryan is bad. You know, people make the pro meta stuff. is like, well, you know, like, stuff could have changed. There could be a balance patch, like, between alpha and beta. We don't know if things have changed since then. It's probably different for them. But when we played the alpha, the regular ladder run was terrible. But once you added the speed boost, which, by the way, the point of that is Ryan is one of the last remaining heroes that needs somebody else to enable him. So that's a whole different conversation to have. You know, there's characters right now that without the enabler, like Zen, like Zen is tough to play if you don't have Brig in high level play because Ball just like, you know, kills you, Ball Tracer. So you need that Brig. You don't have to rely on your teammates constantly picking other things. You can rely on yourself. However, Ryan is one of the few that actually still really enjoys another person's pick. And that makes it supercharged. It's so much stronger. So it's like there, there's so many dynamics that Ryan could end up sucking in two weeks. We don't know that. Like people have to figure stuff out. So I I don't disagree with the deathmatch people. I just I'm telling you to put the brakes on a little bit because I don't think we have enough data and enough time yet. 
Sam? I'm a little confused what people mean when they say deathmatch as well. Like, what, what are the, what's the community intend when that's a criticism? Uh, Sam can go first. Well, but. actually, well, I mean, no, not, not that you started, Frida. I just want to elaborate on a, something that I remember you said in your video, which is that, I think, was it Space who said it plays like COD? And you said, you know, mm -hmm. actually, in, in retrospect, that's kind of like a laughable statement. Because I think when people, I'm not, again, it's hard to generalize. Well, people, Push but does. I think, I, I think Push does play a bit like COD. But yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt. It's just, uh, I, you know. No, so I, I, think, I think that's you know, what people he's think. He's an awesome player, but. Um, I think that's what people ah, think so, when they right. say, like, deathmatchy. They think it's going to turn into, you know, like, essentially the team deathmatch arcade mode. Mm. Well, I, I like to try to be really specific with terminology with a lot of these things so that we're accurate in uh, how we describe it. But what I assume that means is like, it's hard to move because like covers paramount crossfires are huge and you die quickly. Like that's what COD is to me. Right. Um, and you think of the objective modes, like jumping on the objective, your fodder. <laughs> and then there's guys on cover points that are, are mowing everybody down. I mean, I played COD for years. So like when you, when we say what COD is, like I, I uh, try to take seriously what, what that means. And I think like, can, is there like beefy characters that can get in the mix of things and take longer to die? Or is there like big abilities that, cause thing causes things to happen yes all those things are true like tank to me and maybe i've said this yet uh it would be an interesting question to see what you guys think i think tank is like kind of broken as a role in overwatch 2 so far like if you think about it like they gave ryan i think 650 hp and and but nobody i don't think everybody cares i think it's totally fine because there's like one tank both teams have one tank they got to do their job on their own and if you don't like getting run over by the one tank go the other way that's how i always feel like on any of the other roles when i'm playing them um but anyway de deathmatchy it's like uh, do you not want to be eliminating the opponent in your shooter game? Like, is is this not what? What do you want to happen if you don't <laughs> want it to be deathmatch? Do, do you they want the want MOBA? They want double goats. shield. They want Connect Four. Come on. <laughs> right, right. This, this is my point. Do you want a goats team fight where you're just healing forever until you ult? Is that what you're asking for? Because uh, at least for me, that's not what I want. Like, I like I like some abilities in there. I like the the tank abilities as they are like i like tank gameplay but i don't want fights to take forever either i don't want it to feel like you can't move because the the i, I erected this uh fortress of a team comp we have two shields and we get to hide behind it and there's an immortality field you can never get to it ha 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 like is that is that what you're asking for community when you're like i don't want i want moba gameplay well that doesn't make sense to me either because if you if you want I, i'm into dota and i know every moba is a little different but dota is all about like hiding in the corner, hit a stun, bunch of abilities, everything blows up. Like, even in that, it doesn't make sense to me. So I'm, I'm not actually sure what people are asking for, and I'm being a little harsh and well, facetious on this point. But um, if you don't want Overwatch 2, what do you want? Because I think the answer is actually Double Shield and Goats, which, which we would all probably say we hate, and I just want to know if I can discount your opinion or not, people who are, who are saying these things, because I think yeah, Overwatch 2 is great. swinging hard today. Let's go, yeah. let's go. <laughs> the beard has brought out the, the real Frito, the deep, deep repressed <laughs> anger. No, it's I just think my like... evil twin, actually. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, I think that to be fair, in this regard, there's a little bit of survivorship bias, I think, in the Overwatch community, because we've got a lot of people who've stuck around, and, and I... It's very weird because there's a lot of rose-tinted views about goats. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't dislike goats or anything like that. But I remember playing in the era of goats and everybody in that era hated goats, it, at least for certainly after the first couple of months. Like after it stopped being a new thing, everyone hated it. And I do, it is a little bit of a curious talking point that nowadays a lot of people in the community look back at that quite fondly. And I do wonder if that's a case of survivorship bias because of course the God, people... I looked at God like that. I do. Yeah, exactly, right? Like... It's, it's happened a lot when metas get stale, like we just kind of, we hate them. And then later, sometimes people look back at them nostalgically. And I do wonder if this is a case of, well, of course, the people who stuck around and still play Overwatch 1 today are not super disappointed with Double Shield or GOATS mm. compared to the number of people who left precisely because of GOATS. But we're kind of alluding to that, you know, we're going a little bit away from that point, Sam, and I'm conscious you wanted to say something. So again, mm -hmm. talking about the idea of like deathmatchy versus... I suppose the more goatsy MOBA s aspect of Overwatch. Where do you think Overwatch Two is kind of fitting? So, a couple of things. One to tip the hat a little bit to Frito's point. I think there's a chance Tank might be the best role in the game. Two to Flats. 
Oh, yeah. Apparently, I was talking to Ice doing a tier list yesterday. Apparently, Ryan is actually starting to see some play now. Like, Ryan Rush. Um, when I played Ryan against Doomfist, who was supposed to be, like, the best tank in the game at the time, I played against Quake. Felt pretty neutral because a lot of the interactions between Doomfist and Reinhardt, they have answers for each other, which is mm -hmm. what makes the game have a ton of depth where it's not necessarily deathmatch. Like the, the problem with the community's perception of deathmatch, in my opinion, and this is something I think we've also come to as well until we actually got our hands on the product, is people don't think there's a gray area between Call of Duty and what Overwatch is supposed to be, right? And there's a massive gray area. Like, to, I feel like it is an unrealistic statement and an inaccurate statement now after playing it to say that that game played like Call of Duty. It didn't feel like Call of Duty at all. It felt like Overwatch to me. It felt like original Overwatch yes. to me that mm. was very open for a couple reasons. One, almost all passive value in the game was removed entirely. You don't get value for being passive at all and from a hero design standpoint, for one. For two... With the game type changes, and this is what I talked about for Push in 2019, when you replace 2CP, a game mode that like, especially has a lot of defensive holds that tend to be stationary holds, when you remove that entire game mode and replace it with Push, which is constant movement, constant setups, constant, not death ball, per se, because there are some holds you can have that are like not death ball-y, right? It's not like rush in and they just, just go kill everything, but like the passive value of the game is just straight up non-existent, which is really fun for all roles. Um, so, so when people talk about deathmatch, you know, I, I feel like it's just too vague of a statement to really hone in on what it actually is. Because if you look at deathmatch, well, Call of Duty's deathmatch, Valorant's deathmatch too, right? Overwatch it can be deathmatchy. But the game formats themselves are so different when you actually get into the subsets of the, of the categories of like how they play and like what they actually do that a blanket statement says nothing. And I think that's what Frito kind of talked about. It. So like oh, this, this version of Overwatch is, is, is just a better version of the game. It's just better. Mm -hmm. And they took a gamble with 5v5 and I think it's going to pay off. I think it's actually going to pay off. I was very skeptical. I didn't think it was going to be great. Again, we were kind of back and forth saying, all right, well, we got to play it. We got to play it. We got to play it. And the more that we played it, the more we kind of realized, wait a minute, this is actually good. It's a simpler game. The game is less overwhelming. And I think that was the big problem with GOATS. Like, and I play, I, you know, I did my Fire. Pack to Pro in, in Prime GOATS. It was, I would go to bed with like migraines. Like I was exhausted, especially like learning Brig and like learning, because like as the Brig player, you had to learn the entirety of the comp because if you made one mistake, your team loses guaranteed. So like I had to be aware of everything or i'm toast and it was just so much input that like it, it, this version of the game felt nothing like goats to me it felt mm. nothing like goats at all it felt more like a targets were vulnerable but it was like it took the fun part of goats where there was like the tempo and you know but actually reduced the duration so like it's just it just didn't feel oppressive and i think that's the most important thing about why overwatch 2 was so much fun it wasn't oppressive and it just overall maintained what made overwatch great simplified the game a little bit kept the depth and death death matchy but not in a bad way in like the way that we love overwatch if that makes sense mm -hmm. Plus, did you have a... something or yeah, i was, was gonna, gonna add on to yeah go ahead i was okay. gonna add really really quick like you know that notorious screenshot of the two sim walls and then the, <laughs> the, sigma, <laughs> the brig, oh. you know and the oh. rest of shields that will never happen again you know like mm -hmm. you know I, I guess you could have some walls right but like the the mm -hmm. i remember watching XQ, xqc come back to overwatch when he first like took a small break and came back like you know his first like before he like fully left and it was double shield sims and his pc was frying like he literally couldn't his chat was going so fast it plus the double shields the double sim the double sim walls and all the stuff that was happening, his FPS was going like 10. Like, it was just hitting the floor. And it was like, that is kind of the moment that I think, like, everyone should have realized that too much is happening. Like, as much as we love this game for, like, complexity and how much goes into it, you know, and I'm not saying the complexity is bad, but at some point, it becomes too much. And yes, it is a, it is a little bit simpler, but it, on a, in a very good and healthy way. 
I say that skill ceilings I felt like for individual characters went up, especially uh, in in ones that got like some big changes, like uh, whether there was the rework heroes or even something like Brig. Like Brig is skill ceiling, in my opinion, went up um, because you have to use your whip shot as your only stun now. Um, and it's not like you just like, you know, you can't just be the end all character anymore and sit on high ground, whip things off. And then anything else that comes out, you bash it, wait for your whip shot another half a second, then push them off. Like what the, the bash doesn't do stun anymore. So like you have to be smarter with how you're going to use those abilities. And, and, and it translates to things like Cassie, like Cassie doesn't just destroy like Doomfist or, or Winston or tracer. Like, if you if you throw the grenade at a tracer and you stick her, she can still recall. Like if she has her abilities and is playing it smart, she has counterplay. There isn't you just got flashed from Narnia or like, you know, you don't have to like blink forward, blink back, blink forward, blink back. Well, you gotta, you gotta do sixteen blinks and then recall another time and then you know come off the top rope and try to like bet you know. But if you throw it at the ground and the sun just opens up and like you're just you're dead. Like you know what I mean? Like there's the the la the CC being taken away these like super high level complexities and like i think on the most basic level for something like overwatch league and content creators is the game is going to be easier to watch it's going to be better viewer experience because remember when overwatch was hot back in 2017 2018 2019 maybe sorta when like we were like overwatch League was like on disney plus and stuff like yeah. that all the boomers would look at the game and go, what's happening? There's just so many colors. I can't tell what's happening. Taking that a step down, I think it's a more digestible game, not just for boomers, but I'm saying like for the average game consumer who wants to watch what the most current game is when it has an exciting esports event. Hence, something like Valorant. I don't follow Valorant very much. I don't watch much Valorant content. When Valorant had its big tournament last year and was the dominating ever all over Twitch, I watched a little Valorant just because I was curious. I think that that power is unbelievable, and I think Overwatch can absolutely mimic it and have something similar, if not do it better. And that simplicity comes from their entire change. And I think you're right, Sam. I think they took a big risk. And they went against the grain, and I think they did it right. Frida, you were going to add something as well. Yes. Yeah, so... With the complexity and deathmatch, I was trying to give the devil's uh, advocate argument to this deathmatch point. I think some things that are definitely true and why people are getting this is that there's more neutral game, obviously, less ultimates, and less ability spam. But to me, these are all good things because of the... It's, just, it's just interesting to me because in a comment section of any video, you will see a long list of connoisseurs of Overwatch who apparently fully understand it and are great teammates. <laughs> and then you go to hit Q and it's really weird because the teammates you get aren't like that. So it's weird. It's like, like everyone in the comment section loves teamwork and loves holding hands and loves going together and always regroups properly. They always do these things, <laughs> but then you go and play it. So it's like, it's a schism to me with, with that. So like, yes, there is definitely less um of a necessity of like big ult fights for example i'm still not sure there's so many things i'm not sure about with overwatch 2 i don't know how to properly ult because there's a lot of weird tempoed fights especially in push where it's like you sort of have control of the map but they're respawning and they're coming over here and as a tank as we've said maybe you want to go fight the squishy that's respawning but they're on the objective and it's like i don't know what's the right thing to do yet and i i, I assume as we start to watch the pros experiment we'll start to figure this out a bit more um but um the thing that i like is that i can decipher what's going on and maybe it's just because i'm getting old <laughs> I used to have a hair when I started the channel six years ago. Now I look like this. Uh, everybody's uncle. Uh, but I go back to Overwatch 1, and there's just so many abilities all the time. Everything is going off. And, and shout out to Eddie. He has a great analogy for this. Like, Eddie struggles in, in Overwatch, but is good at Valorant. Right? Like, Valorant is a game where the tempo of it, there's a lot of abilities there too, but it's like you have your lane there's abilities coming in and out flashbangs whatever and it's in front of you overwatch 2 plays in front of you whereas overwatch 1 a lot of the game was behind you 
where your camera isn't. And just hearing, oh, my Ana used this cooldown, or does my Zarya have her bubble yet? Can I go here? Can I step forward? Other I better get enough healing to stay in this position or I'm screwed. That's not how Overwatch 2 plays, which is what makes it so exciting. But I think also it might look more deathmatchy because it's like, um, well, you just get to jump in and zap a thing and kill it and jump out. And it's like, the game's simpler. It's like, yes, it's simpler in the best way possible that you will you actually can track what's going on. And there's so many little things of quality of life that help that as well. I think like the ping system, the sound system of the uh, enemies dying, it ticking up at a higher pitch. Like there's a lot of things that people don't really mention that much, but adds to this immersion into the game where I feel like I can understand it. And I think most people are going to understand it but maybe just watching it, it's it's a little too fraggy. But anyway, I wouldn't want it the other way. So go ahead, Sam. To add on to that, I think something that's very important about a point you make, you said it was simpler, right? Like the game looks simpler, looks like more brawly. Simple does not mean more boring or easy. And what's so impressive about the, the alpha that I think is the best way to put it, it's the game is simpler, which will make it easier for more players to get into, but it maintained all of the depth and complexities in the game. So the skill floor of the game was lowered and the skill ceiling was actually higher than it is on live right now because of all the ability spam. And I feel like that's like a, a maybe a good way to put it. I, um, mm -hmm. It just feels better. It just feels so much better, like so much better. I forgot to finish this quote. A, a cool thing Eddie has to describe this, why he struggles in, in Overwatch is like, it's like counting cards. You know, at the casino, it's like, well, like, like, you're like, that's what it feels like to play Overwatch one, because there's six mm -hmm. characters on your team, six on the enemy team. Do they have cooldowns? Do we have cooldowns? You have to track it all in your head to be a, a really good player. Now, that still happens in Overwatch two, but mm -hmm. it's just more in front of you, was kind of my point with that. So it, it's like, th this is the, the COD versus Overwatch uh, argument here, somewhat. The abilities are still really strong. And we already said we think the tanks are the strongest. So that's why I just think it's kind of laughable to be like, well, it's just COD now. But it, no, it's no, because the tanks are so good. They just can't, you can't really say that to me. Go ahead. Hey guys, SCB here. Just going to quickly interrupt this episode of the Group Up podcast to say that if you're enjoying this content, then please do consider signing up for my Patreon to support me directly. It's really amazing because it allows me to keep making content like this carefree, regardless of how many views Overwatch does or doesn't get i know no one likes sellout ads but chances are if you've listened till this far in then you're at least somewhat enjoying the content so please do consider at least leaving a like a subscribe and a comment underneath the video on youtube it really does help but that's it for me now back to the discussion under that actually in a very specific instance and i i haven't released it yet i kind of wish i could um, it, i'll have it tomorrow it's i've been building this up forever but i played ryan versus rissa like and I still didn't know that much about Rissa. Was, you know what I mean? Like I didn't, like I hadn't had that much experience with it yet. And the thing I learned very quickly versus Arissa and the Ryan Arissa duel was that Arissa would beat me with her cooldowns, but I would beat her over time and damage. So what did that mean? This mean I couldn't just like int in on the Arissa and like do damage and kill her. No, she would use all her abilities and stun, just like push me back. And I and I say they would use the word stun light, like not with a little bit of caution because it's not like she like hard locks you and you're stunned and then you're bashed and then you're flashed and then like you know your life flashes before your eyes and you get sent back to overwatch one and then you come back to overwatch two and you die like it just doesn't work it's not like that it's like she has one stun a hard stun which is the javelin the other stun is more of a displacement which is the spinny spear um and what ended up happening was something that was very very smart was uh, the Aristas we were playing against, I think it was, it was actually Toaster, would, if I got too aggressive, if I went, like, too far in, get behind me, pop his spinny spear, and push me into the team. And because that's, like, a fortify, like, like, it's, like, you can't CC it back, they just push you out of it. Like, I just got sucked into their team. But that was a smart play to, like, get behind me and push me into my team. And I had to learn from that. And I learned even further... That I couldn't just like, you know, Arissa has no shield, right? Like you like people always say, like, oh, Arissa has no shield. Like, what did you do to her? Like, you know, the shields are not in Overwatch 2, snipers dominate. You know what would end up happening? Is you would think that you would have an easy shatter. No, because the smart Arissa will keep her javelin. And the second they hear the hammer, just like shoop, it just just hits you with it and stuns you out of it. And you're like, the underscore nice up? underscore guy one. And this is where I want to talk about this way one up, sub to the empty one. In current day Overwatch. You have to account for if they're playing double shield, Cassidy, Hanzo, 
uh, Bap, let's say Bap Brig, you have to account for the lamp. If they have lamp, even if you hit the shatter, they're not going to die. Does Cassidy have flash if he's playing with their team? If he does, he can flash you out of it. You won't get it. Oh, but the big one, you got to get past the two big shields. How do you get past the two big shields? Because they're going to break your shield first, right? They break your shield first. So what you have to do is like the Sigma has to use his shield as you're walking past the Arissa shield. You know the Arissa already just planted her shield. So the Arissa doesn't have shield that she might not have fortify. Sigma definitely doesn't have his shield out yet. So you're doing the calculations that even <laughs> if he recalls it at the second you pass it, will she, they have enough time to back up and put it up again and block your shatter? Uh, does is Brig hiding in the corner, uh, ready to take your firstborn child? Like, like if you accounted for everything in the situation, and if you missed anything, then the answer is no. In Overwatch Please. Two, the answer is, I know they have javelin. I can't shatter until that javelin is gone, and that javelin's gone. Hit it. Arissa has to know you have ult and save that stun because there's so many less CCs. That when you have them, they're so much more impactful and smart to use. Mm. You can't just use all your cooldown abilities on cooldown and just pull on cooldown like current Arissa, shield on cooldown, throw rock on cooldown, whip shot on cooldown, because everyone has so many abilities, you're never going to get through that line of defense anyways. There's only one or two on that team at maximum, and that's like Ana and, and then one of your tanks having it. So you have to be smart with it. And as the opposing tank player... It's much more manageable. And if you are able to be someone that recognizes that and tracks that they have it or don't have it, you will feast, which shows that you're thinking ahead and you're being aggressive and you're being a smart player. You're rewarded. I, th I think, I think what you, you know, you, all of you have spoken really well on this subject. And I think what I think of when I, when, when we, we talk about this, there's complexity and there's over complexity, I think. And I think a mm -hmm. lot of people mix the sort of simplifying with as if it's it's just a dumb game and i think the comparison i would take it to is a moba game why do moba games struggle to attract new players because there's that entry level barrier of like there's 200 things i need to know before i can even play the game and you look at like a moba game like a dota and you're like wow there's like 150 items let alone you know 50 100 heroes and then the items combine into recipes so there's like on top of just playing the physical game, it feels like there's a million things you have to learn around the game just to function. And I think that over the years, Overwatch has gone in that way as well, where, like you described, Flats, like to make a play, you have to start thinking about like the eight potential abilities that could stop you on the enemy team. And again, one of the many things that have happened is that lack of CC means that you don't have to play that game anymore. Like, of course, you have to worry about how much damage a Cassidy could do to you in X amount of time. But you don't have to keep constantly tracking about like every single cooldown on earth just before you can press w as a tank and i think that one thing that the devs develop deserve tremendous credit for and again i want to i want to try and provide the counter arguments as well because i know I'm, a, I'm conscious we're all very positive and there are negatives we will get to as well particularly supports but i think one thing i really want to give the devs kudos for is that over the years we've kind of had some complaints that crop up over and over the game is too hard to watch. As you said, that flats with that example of the many shields crossing over each other like a Ghostbusters beam, right? The game is hard to watch. Tanks and certain metas feel oppressive. Like they feel so bad that if you don't mirror, you just lose. Uh, the the over CCing, right? The uh, inability as an individual to make impact. Like kudos to the devs because they looked at all those things and they toned all of that back. Mm -hmm. Everything that over the years we've griped about as Overwatch, they've taken all that away now, will we lose some things that people love and enjoy about the game? Of course we will. There's no perfect version, right? There's no perfect version that makes everybody happy. Is this the version of Overwatch that everyone will like? Of course not. Some of you want the GOATS version. Is it, in my opinion, a better version of Overwatch and what Overwatch wanted to be? I think yes. I think what Overwatch is supposed to be, this is a better version of what that is than what current Overwatch has become. And I see, Sam, you've been nodding along as well, so I, I want to let you yeah. chime in on that. I, I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, to, to, to talk about and, and emphasize what Flats was saying there, um, the what, make, what separates Overwatch for me personally from every other game I played and what he described is the exchange of cooldowns and having them be generally neutral amongst the cast 
So like, I feel like one thing that we forgot about Overwatch or that the devs kind of forgot that they fixed, like you said, which they did a, they did a great job. Like seriously, I, I did not expect that to be that good. And it was, is the means as to how you get value. And as long as that cooldown exchange is neutral, like Flat said, how he learned that if he, he couldn't shatter because if Toaster would go behind him as Arissa and push him into the team, like those intricate interactions is what separated Overwatch from any Call of Duty ever. And in fact, you're getting more of that now in the alpha than you have in Overwatch for, for years, as well as how easy it is to view the devs peeling all this stuff back. Like every major issue that I think the game has had was resolved and especially with those uh, the cooldowns that we all kind of looked at that were just oppressive and that we couldn't ever get around them what ma made a lot of them so good is when you stack them together and if there's one less player on the other team that's a big indirect nerf to things like immortality field to things like briggs and spire and it's it's massive radius to things like fortify to grasp to the cooldowns that you could never pierce right the cooldowns that you can't outplay when they get used violate what I like to call the neutral exchange of the game flow. And the reason why Genji, I always kind of use Genji as a good meter. Like if Genji is neutral in the meta, that means the game's in a good spot because one single target healing is probably like better because that means AoE healing isn't overwhelming his kit too. All of his cooldowns are neutral. So if the character is neutral with neutral cooldowns, it means that the kind of exchange of the game flow that Flats was talking about where Toaster has to think about, okay, I'm going to set up behind him and try to push him into the team, right? That depth of Overwatch and the neutral flow of cooldown exchange is there. And porting the game to 5v5 and really changing a lot of the th tanks and, and other heroes the way they did further emphasize that neutral flow of cooldowns in the game. And that overall just makes a better product, in my opinion. So I think they did a good job of capturing the essence of what makes Overwatch great. I think I went a little off topic there of, of your question, SVB. No, I, no. I, uh, is there anything else I needed to answer there? Because I'm kind of just brain farting right now. No, no. I think we, we kind of all took it in a slightly different direction, but I think a relevant direction. And unless there's anything else you guys want to add on top of that, I will take it to another topic I want to bring up. So Mito is easy to please, famously. So, <laughs> so I just wanted yeah, to linger. Yeah, like, yeah. like, I mean, like, it, it takes you a while. I just wanted to point that out. Like, it takes Sam a while to like say that much positivity about the game. And uh, I, I'm yeah, I, surprised. I, yeah. Like you an know. example, you know, uh, I, I like what you brought up because, like, an example is like Immortality Field. A lot of people are still complaining about that. I think, um, and some some kit like that, but. The way Overwatch 2 plays is that because there isn't the ability stacking that you're talking about, it's like anything can be outplayed, it feels yes, like. because that's the best way to put it. Yes. Immortality Field is strong if you stand in it, but the map's big. So it's like, where are you going to put it? How are you going to protect it? Most of the tanks don't have shields anyway. Even if they do, a lot of them aren't like, de like or they're closer to Rhine where they're not devastating. Like the tanks with high damage don't have shields other than Sigma. So maybe that kind of breaks it. But the, the ones like Doomfist probably has the highest damage and he doesn't have one, for example. So the, the stacking of abilities makes them very oppressive, which is what I, you guys said it like so much better than I could have. But that's the oppressiveness I felt when I tried to go back to Overwatch 1 where I'm like, I just can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I walk in a choke and I'm dead. And there's just it, the, the team comps are just way too strong in Overwatch 1. <laughs> <laughs> you're on a spawn? Oh, my God. What a victory. Uh, yeah. All right. Joe, your main tank uh, player, tell me what every spawn looks like. <laughs> and this is where uh, a lot of I can already see like people are saying, well, you know, you guys are two tank players and a, and a DPS who, you know, with Doomfist is now potentially a tank player as well. You guys are underestimating how bad supports are. And I think a lot of people have taken, particularly ML7, who I think, you know, most people would agree is kind of like the support, the, the support content yeah. creator, right? People look at ML and they, like, he's the guy for support. And ML, obviously, I don't want to paraphrase him, but I think he's certainly been skeptical of he how... Uh, support is going to be played in Overwatch 2, perhaps underpowered. Do you guys agree, first of all, that support is perhaps underpowered or something to be concerned about? And if so, what? You know, how do you feel about that? And Sam, you're nodding, so I'll go to you first then. Um, he's right. 
but he's right at this point in time, but it was the best thing that could happen for the game because support has been the most oppressive role in this game for years. So, and the good news is it's actually some pretty quick fixes. I think the big problem was they really wanted to hone back on CC, so but they looked at kind of the wrong abilities. Like, I don't mind Sleep Dart being on a short. I think Sleep Dart was like a 14 second cooldown 15. or something, guys. 15, ridiculous. You cut that in half, reduce the sleep duration, and Ana has the tools to contribute the fight. The reason that the supports were the best, the, the supports that were the best that I saw were Lucio Moira, and the reason for that was their consistency in a fight. Consistency has always been the best thing in Overwatch, and Frito talked about that a ton. Moira, six second orb cooldown. Six second fade, or I think like a six, it's either six or eight second on the orb, six second on the fade, right? If you reduce other supports cooldowns to compete at that new tempo of the game, and if to compensate, reduce the power of the abilities, you see every support getting more active, as well as the roll passive that needs to be tuned individually for each support. It was useless on Ana. It was useless on anything that like has to actually be in the fight where it's taking damage. So like. I'd like to see it get tweaked a little bit differently for Ana. So ML7 is completely right. They're going to have to buff supports. But the good news is it's a really easy problem to fix. And like Ana just does not need a 15 second cooldown on sleep. Just make it make it seven, eight seconds and make the sleep duration like one or two seconds if that's how low the cooldown needs to be to compete with the faster tempo game. It's a super easy fix. And I think they're actually going to hit the nail on the head because it's just, it's right. It's on a silver platter. It's not going to be that hard to change. Flats, I have a lot to that? say. Okay, well, yeah, well, 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 yeah, if you got a lot to oh, say, we'll also come... some in insider, uh, yeah, some insider info as well, which might change the conversation a bit. So, the um, some of the owl content creators who have watched scrims have reported that the Lucio Moira epidemic, uh, <laughs> of that being the only thing that felt playable, mm -hmm. like, I, like, I think it was kind of tied to how strong Sojourn was at the time because she was super, super strong, and then they toned her back, so like, you just couldn't exist as a support on any sight line. But now it seems like Moira's not getting played so much. And um, mm -hmm. l there's some Lucio Ana going on a little bit with, with some Genji. And I think Lu by far Lucio is the best support in the game, which maybe that's why I'm like, all the roles feel great because I, I like to play Lucio. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also will point out at the that was also true early Overwatch 1 as well, where movement was so key and actually getting a li that little edge and having the, like, supportive support, I mean, where, where like, you're actually moving people around. Uh, booping contextually is, like, the best option you have for structuring the engagement, whereas before, in Overwatch 1, you could just place a Brig there and she's an impenetrable fortress of insta-kill stunning, right? Like, Brig now plays like Lucio, but not better. She's just like, I, I hold position and heal a bit more, and she also boops. Whereas Lucio boops, but runs around a bit more and, and does the, the shooter thing. Um, so anyway, the, like I think we'll have our opinions changed a bit when we start to see the pros play, but um, I wanted to emphasize the role passive things. This is um, a, a thing I sent to the devs as well, that I think like the self-healing out of combat, so to speak, like the mercy passive going to all the supports feels a little silly on the ones that can't move because it's really strong on mercy because she can like um, escape away and all of a sudden be behind cover and then self heal and regen up. That that she can actually use in the fight. Whereas Zen and Ana, they can't do that because once they're overwhelmed, they better shoot their way out or they die. <laughs> like like that's how it feels. But at the same time, I think when we start to see these high level uh, pros play Ana, like Ana looks like really bad in an average player's hands. And our expectation from Overwatch 1 is that you could kind of heal Badazana, stay safe in the back, and just sort of vaguely shoot at the tanks and eventually get Nano and everything's great, right? Like, I think there's a lot of expectations from support players that that's an acceptable way to play the game. Overwatch 2, you better sleep the tank. And, and luckily, you have huge plays to make because Ana is holding that sleep dart. That's the best, like, disable in the game, pretty much. And you can hit it on a lot of tanks that don't have uh, uh, ways to uh, deal with you, like Doomfist especially, yeah, like, while he's using... Doom through power block, yeah. Right, right. That's a huge play. So, like, I think our perception of what to expect from supports might need to change. So, yeah. while I agree... I'm clowning on supports all day. I mean, I'm uploading gameplay of just these poor gold players that don't know what to do. But that was the case in Overwatch 1 as well. But I, I think, like, we've conditioned our support community to expect to not have to play the hero shooter game, and they can just sit behind the tanks while the tanks catch everything in the face all day. And now the tanks, I'm the captain now. Now I got all the fun toys where I can jump in and zap everybody. So, like, the... I wonder how much is going to change when we start to realize, like, the, the base point of where supports are is, is what I'm saying. And, and how much more 
supportive they actually are in that like brig isn't the death machine oh i get to just dual dps nope nope you better run away like your job is is to heal things flail it away and run constantly and survive as her job in overwatch one too but like you just no one knows it which is funny yeah exactly but now she's built to only do that so it's not like instant stun value is guaranteed like it was in overwatch one right like it, you're exactly right to bring that up. So like Zen Brig is one of the comps getting played in Owl as well because uh, of that you actually can keep the Zen alive. Like I think we just have to, I, I want us to learn the game first a bit more before we definitively say like like support needs help. Like like I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little bit on board, but I don't know if it's there's a learning curve here that we just all have to adjust to. Platts, where do you weigh in on this? So, okay, I was going to kind of use the preview information as well, but I mean, now that it's out there a little bit, uh, it is with the Moira thing. I've seen, I think I saw Karki make a tier list yesterday saying that everyone should become a DPS Moira. Nolan was ahead of his time and play on the back line. You'll kill everybody. <laughs> and I thought it was hilarious because like it was like low-key kind of true. Um, but I do want to kind of like give credit where it's due. Uh, there was a lot of very quick like changes um when we played the alpha like they were updating like very often you know because i mean that's what the point of it was to figure out like where things were you know what i mean like with the game and having more eyes and more hands it helps out a ton um and, and i don't I believe that would have stopped when we stopped playing you know what i mean like i don't think that's a thing so uh I would say someone like Genji when we were playing uh, was not very good. And now all of a sudden people are saying he's being played an owl. Well, that would probably pertain that something's <laughs> changed since yeah. we've last touched it. Um, so like, you know what I mean? Like putting the, I'm just putting pieces together. I'm not using any privy information. I'm literally just connecting the dots that are public information. There's probably something that's changed. Now, if I was ML and and I the tank roll was as bad as support was in that alpha, I y you would have heard me screaming everywhere, right? So honestly, good on him for restraining a little bit. Uh, however, though, I think that uh, that was definitely something that was going to be addressed because I am telling you uh, that everyone said the same thing about support. <laughs> uh, we're, I don't think we're dumb. I don't think the devs are dumb. Uh, contrary to popular belief, I think people are going to realize soon that they're actually not dumb. Uh, and because everyone's like, oh, they don't know how to balance. Uh, well, actually, you should see this. You should see the 5v5 balance. It's it's, it's actually, you know, like, obviously, things are going to have to things have to be obviously changed like here and there. And it'll dynamically always be like that. No game is ever perfectly balanced. And honestly, if it ever gets perfectly balanced, it's probably, you know, got no more content because that's where we're at in Overwatch, uh, two, or Overwatch 1 right now. But regardless, though, the whole point being, uh, I, I think that support will probably look very different come beta time because I think that the alpha was a great example of let's give it to some pros and some content creators and some people outside of our bubble and see what they think about it. Everyone said support was not that fun and kind of so, felt like it got the short end of the stick. Let's fix that before everybody else gets it in this beta. You know what I mean? Like, I think that it would be a little bit naive to think that there's going to be no changes i could be totally wrong but i have some faith that there was there's going to be changes by the time we get to beta time although the concern is not invalid yes support was awful it's a play oh, um not saying you couldn't get value you could definitely get value if you were a good support player however i don't like support already when i played support i still didn't like it you know what i'm saying but everyone else that didn't like tank played tank and liked it so like they clearly did something right with tank people that didn't play dps much like myself included played dps and i was like this is pretty fun so if i had fun on tank and i had fun on dps and i didn't have fun on support and everyone said support had a problem it sounds like there's some work to be done over there and i think they understand that and it's probably going to get done so Let's pump the brakes a little bit it's good concern and good feedback and i don't think it's invalid but i think we wait till beta to see if some stuff has changed so one one thing i want to add to this conversation as well is that i, I actually see myself at least currently in Overwatch one as a support player now like i've historically been a tank main but for the last maybe 12 months i've grinded mostly support so in terms of representation hashtag i think i i feel like a support player 
I didn't feel it was that bad, to be honest. I think there are certain supports that feel bad. Like, I thought Zen felt bad just because I felt like playing him in that environment, I just had no place to hide. Like, I, there was no safe place. And, you know, it was very unlikely to get your other support to look out for you. I certainly didn't feel unimpactful. I still had a lot of fun. Like, I felt like I was playing Ana the way I play her now. I felt like I was playing Bap the way I play him now. And I feel like if the emphasis is support should contribute more to DPSing, I think this is perhaps the key. Now, obviously, someone like ML7 is not an idiot. He knows better than most people in the world how to play support. So when he has that skepticism, it's not invalid. But I also think we're allowed to have a different take. Because I think one of the things that I want to add to this conversation is that supports didn't get anything. And I do think that's part of why it felt underwhelming to play support. Because every other role kind of got something. Like the tanks got a lot. And there's a big thematic change in the fact that it's 5 v5. Five five, there's one less tank. So the emphasis and the mindset going in was like, okay, well, tanks are different. Let's see how they're different. Oh, it plays like this now. It plays totally different. DPS obviously had a lot of changes as well, but they also had a new hero and they had the change that now there wasn't a tank stopping them. So it felt a different experience playing DPS. I think for support, people logged in, they were like, oh, it's just the same thing. Like, I'm just the same exact character, but now there's one less tank, so I guess I don't have to heal them anymore. And I think there was a bit of a, yeah, just an underwhelming moment to go in and there was nothing there. So I have said before, and I'll say it again, I think what they need is maybe those little quality of life updates to bring them in line with Overwatch 2, the way that Monkey gets a right click now, the way that Reinhardt gets two fire strikes and a pin cancel. These are just like a little quality of life thing to say, okay, well, welcome to Overwatch 2. I don't think the problem with support is endemic to the role of support. In comparison to Overwatch 1, there was, and it's much more clear now, again, having played 5v5, it's so clear that there's an endemic problem with the tank role in Overwatch 1 that hasn't been solved for like five years that we've been struggling with for this all entire time. I don't think that same issue translates to Overwatch 2 supports. I don't think it's like there's something fundamentally broken with Overwatch 2 supports. I just think that they maybe need a little bit of tweaking. And even even despite that, like I felt, I felt like I was still having fun. So maybe I'm just a noob and I didn't grind as much as many other people did, but I... I felt it wasn't, I think there's, again, I think there's just a community shift that needs to take place, as Frido alluded to, where people don't like support as a character that must also contribute to kills and dueling, but that's, that's, that's the way. I'm sorry. You may, it may put you off. It may kind of take you away from the game, but I, that's the way. And I think that's mm -hmm. fine in my book. Yeah, I, I think when I was thinking of the things that um, Overwatch 2 doesn't have, the safety of the tank battle, because as as we've said on this call, you don't have to use your tank to push the other tank out of the way, necessarily, because the rest of you could flank, or the map's porous, or whatever. Um, and supports kind of had a safe spot in that natural death ball that almost every Overwatch 1 team fight went in. And that is that is gone. So... That is definitely true. Um, my personal experience playing support, which I did play quite a bit of, um, it was amazing. But I also am a Lucio player, and he's like triple S tier <laughs> in this mode. And I also wonder, too, if the roll passive, like, if I stay on speed and get away, do I self-heal? That, that, because that's obviously OP compared to like Anna, who, who, what is she self healing some poke or something? Like, again, with the whole mobility, that role passive for support biases the more mobile ones. Uh, is a bit of a problem. I, I think a, a role passive change would help. But um, I'd say, like, it also might be, for me, that the matchmaking wasn't good enough for me to really feel the impact of this because uh, something I want to bring up about how the game's asymmetrical now, a lot of the supports don't have the stats to actually fight a tank because the tanks, without any healing involved, let's just say, like, the the... Um, 500 ish health Doomfist is in your backline. You might not have the damage combos or the focus fire from the team. So, if all the things I said are positive before about a tank in Overwatch 1 turning the corner and six enemy abilities hitting him at once, that's terrible. But because there's so many less abilities and you don't have a free stun in the backline, things that come at you uh, very easily overwhelm you. But, and, but they don't kill uh, you fast like in Overwatch 1. Like, it's like. You know what I mean? Like, Doomfist doesn't one-tap you or anything like that. Like, like you don't feel like you got cheesed, which I felt like was a big part of the, the alpha. You know what I mean? Like, even e e most of the time when you died to heroes like Arissa or Doomfist, like, it wasn't like dying to Brig in the, back in the day or dying to, like, mm -hmm. Echo. It's, and I felt like you, like, you didn't feel like you got cheesed. Like, you're like, 
well i lost i i actually lost that like if you like as a support like i didn't play much support but like maybe SUV. like if i'm wrong on this like if you died to a doomfist's ana it was probably because you didn't keep your sleep dart you didn't keep your nade you used it too early or did or you missed like like you had to have like messed up somewhere you know what i mean like mm -hmm. tanks typically won the 1v1s but like you didn't get many 1v1s on tank you know that that your point is perfect, but I think what you have to make sure we're translating it to is you have to duel. What you just said was you better win the duel. And, and what yeah. I was kind of saying early is like a lot of support players are used to never being expected to duel. Oh, you yeah, just don't have fair. to because peel is exists everywhere. Oh, it's someone else. It's my Lucio's job. It's my diva's job. Someone, someone else protect me from this duel. But yeah, what yeah. we're saying now is you have to win the duel, whether it's picking Brig and running away. And like, like these are things that Brig's I so love. Yeah, yeah, like like this is my skill set as a support, as the like main support, repositioning, figuring out who needs help, how to scurry away. So I found it very natural, and I like it a lot. But if you are a bad flex support player, and you're like, well, I want to play the aim aim uh, support character who needs to hit skill shots, but I'm not actually good, and then the Tracer Genji and all these things come at you, and you just you die, and you're like, well, what the heck? In Overwatch 1, I got to live forever in just vaguely in the middle of the team comp, and the, my two tanks protected me. What what gives? I'm like, I, I, I don't have much sympathy for that, unfortunately. Like, I, I think, like, we're going to have to upgrade our expectation of, of what you need to do. And and may, maybe, like Sam said, maybe just some cooldowns need to be changed. But uh, I think ultimately what we're going to find is, like, you're going to have to be expected to play the hero shooter game. I'm, I apologize. But it's better for the whole game overall. Well, I think that's the thing. Because I think this, again, speaks to that philosophical shift. I, again, I, I, I think I've mentioned this many times, especially in the podcast. But... There's so many things that over the years have changed in Overwatch that we haven't physically sat down and addressed. Like we haven't been like, this doesn't work like it do like you think it does. And I think again, a lot of people play support like a like a what you call it, World of Warcraft, MOBA, uh, MOBA mm -hmm. but also like a M uh, MMO, right? MMO, Where it's like yeah. my job is to heal the tank. That's my job. Whereas that's just not the case. It's it's not been the case for support. Like again, I I've odd review support players like all the time, especially like plat and gold support players. And I'm always like, you're just hiding. You don't play the game. Like you're just hiding, and you don't ever try to fight anything back. You just hit your tank up the butt and expect that to win you the game. That's not how you're gonna win the game. And again, I I know there's already some people being like, mm. what does SVB know? I did hit GM on support most recently. The only role I was able to climb back on that thing on. So I think at least I have some competence. I'm not as good as some other people, but. It's because you have to play the game and participate in the game. Now, again, stylistically, some people may feel that that's not the game they wanted to play. And I understand that argument. Like, if you're like, I took up Overwatch because I wanted to be the MMO support who just heals my tank, I can appreciate that POV. But I also would say that this is better for the game overall. And if that falls you by the wayside, I'm sorry. But I think this is, this is going to bring in more people and they're going to enjoy it more. Than just being asked to sit behind their tank and heal them. That's my POV. Sam? Can I add three points to that? To summarize add very four short. If you want. Very short. One, this is the philosophy change you talked about of how nothing in the game is just gonna reward you for picking it up. And that is great. Again, expanding upon this this low skill floor of the game and a high skill ceiling, adding a lot of depth and any hobby that does that, whether it be a sport, competition, game you generally see more longevity out of the product, which is the big question with Overwatch 2. It's the question has never been, are people going to come back? Everyone's going to come play. The question is, how long are they going to stay? Two, I like to think of it like kind of like checks and balances between the three core principles of Overwatch. You have one cooldown management, two positioning, and three aim mechanics, right? We're talking about how supports like have to take duels. Like right now, you can play a lot of support and get a lot of value without taking like almost any duels at all. So it's not like the entire game is about dueling. It's just an important part of it. Is I would say it's almost a third for each of those things. Like they're very well balanced. Like I, like so good. Like I, 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 I can't even explain it. Like I, it blows my mind that in an alpha test, the developers were able to get the game to the point where it's at right now, where it's like a quick, easy fix. And like I. So I feel like I can talk a little bit about the, the support aspect. People say, like, you know, you don't have any support players. I mean, I played Brig and Contenders. Like, I, you know, I played a lot of Ana's, like, my third most played. I'm 4,400 combined on every every season, on every role, right? So, like, I play a lot of support. Like, it didn't feel that bad, and the changes are quick and easy to make. And I they just did such a great job of 
maintaining those three core principles and expanding upon the game at the same time. So like I know a lot of support players might be saying like, yo, like this is terrible. It's really fixable and it wasn't the end of the world. Like I do think that with with how they're able to patch the game that they'll be able to do it pretty quick. I can't I can't believe I'm saying this. I can't believe I'm saying yeah, this. Yeah, look at this. Look at this change, guys. Like, look at this. Like is this some kind of alternate reality but like I I I think they'll be able to fix it pretty quickly. I I don't know what to tell you. I, you know, I'm, just, I, I'm glad I didn't make any bets saying I'll have to do something crazy if that, like this, I, I've never seen an alpha this good. I, and I, I, I really don't know what else to say other than that. I think someone one, used to one thing side I wanted to do. side of Sam like a year ago in the <laughs> podcast being like, the devs suck. <laughs> There's Fire never going to get this on, fire on. I was wrong. I mean, come on. But, well, no, I just, but just, again, I think, yeah. it, you know, it shows that your maturity to kind of admit because you know you could you could have just doubled down and been like I hate it just for the spite. So that kind of guy. yeah, yeah. No, so good job no. on admitting, you know. Free we, uh, we started this uh, little section, I think, a little bit. Um, ML 7s take is, of course, is is valid. And I think uh, the whole like mo uh, MMO support phenomenon it isn't really a, a pertains to him. Um, to cap off the point, I'm, I'm interested in seeing his reply to this. But also, I'd say, undoubtedly that role of flex support is harder. Like the pressure of the game is definitely like there, you have much, it's, it's just a harder game, mainly because your two, it's Overwatch one, you could have two tanks that would gum up the works of a choke or whatever. Now things are coming at you. So yes, the, the role is definitely harder, but I think it, it's, it's better overall. And I know ML7 is skilled enough to <laughs> yeah. sleep dart his way out of that. So yeah, yeah. none of, yeah, none of the criticisms be fine. apply to ML clearly. Yeah. Also, I want to mention that ML and I, I, I don't know if ML is watching. ML, we played like seven, eight games and we, we had 100% win rate on support duo. We actually mm -hmm. just like wrecked, we wrecked our lobbies as well. Just, uh, oh, just peeling for each other. And I think that's like a big part of it is that pr 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 probably in the quick play as well, there wasn't a lot of peeling for each other. But again, I know that's something that ML understands. So he's entitled to, to opinion. It's entirely fair. I say, you know, have, oh. have a feel for yourself. Oh, yeah, go ahead. An, in an interesting point that I remembered because um, I can't remember when our, if I, this was in my video or maybe on Twitter or something, but um, in ML's video, he's like, Ana needs to be closer to the engagement. And in my video, I'm like, well, maybe supports need to be further away. The interesting thing is, like, they're both kind of right, I think. Whereas ML7, I would assume what he would say is, like, Ana better get that impact value because you're probably going to die. So if you just like hide, like you're just never going to get impact, you probably die anyway. And that's just the truth, I think, of Overwatch 2, where you better land some some kit value because uh, if you play like a Zen or, or whatever, it's really tough to keep a the, the... That's the top of your team comp, essentially, like the, that flex uh, support position, which is why... And, oh, another thought I had too, like... Focusing tanks is kind of impossible to me in, in Overwatch 2 so far. I almost wonder if, like, supports did less healing, it would be easier to actually target the tank, because at the moment, it always feels like the tank is so tanky. Like, Zarya with two bubbles is just impossible to kill. Impossible! She self-heals in between the bubble usage. It's like a thousand effective health. So it always feels like you should avoid the tank and go for the support. I, I wonder if there's, like, a way that they can not lose all the tanking benefits that we're so excited about but like sort of because the flow chart of what you should focus uh feels kind of obvious in that way but again i'm i'm thinking when everyone learns the game better we might actually learn how to protect our support teammates because at the moment it's like it's yeah. it, it, it's playing more deathmatchy than it will in a few months when we see like because because I, I i'll be i'll admit i in no way thought like a, a death ball comp was going to be run in Owl. And they're like, well, we're playing Ryan and, and Lucio, and it's great. And I'm like, wait a second. This is, this is, there's got to be something I have to learn about this. And I think when we start to learn to play the maps, maybe we can oh, uh, believe me. keep our honors alive. <laughs> and, uh, Ryan was good. It's, and, and apparently Doom is like, I was hearing that Doom is like one, like one of the most highest picks right now. And when I played Ryan against Quake, like I, it felt very neutral. Like I, and map mm -hmm. situational too, which that, that was... Like, I, seriously, I think the best point to make is, like, it feels like Overwatch from 2020. That's what it felt like to me. Like, October 2020. It felt like that patch the entire time. It was great. Well, here's, here's something to throw into the mix, which is that there's a couple things that potentially bias our opinions, right? Firstly, the matchmaking, we, we didn't have comp, right? Just for clarity, yeah. we didn't have comp. We were just playing, essentially, quick play. Now, a lot of us on this call have said that, you know, Overwatch 2 quick play, Overwatch 1 quick play is very good. 
So there's one element where it's like, well, we played a quick play version of the game. And the second thing is that, again, as we pointed out, but I will remind again, is that no one was like sweaty tryharding, right? No one was like, I will play the most obnoxious thing I think is going to get me the most definitive win in the way that they do when we pick, we hit ladder we mode. In no? But I was going to, I was going to bring up, so was it any different in scrims? Because a lot of people will leverage, well, you guys were just having quick play fun. But when people mm -hmm. were tryharding and, and, you know, playing scrims, was it any different? So flats, go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the Doom game uh, where me and Emong played Doom was a, like the one meme game we did because we were stuck on Doom. So both Sombra players, I had Ruben, they had Fitzy, played Sombra and just harassed us the whole game. But like that wasn't really that much difference than the rest of the experience, except this time we couldn't fight our way out. Um I have so much footage, I can't wait to put it out, honestly. But, like, especially, like, from the scrim footage, like, everyone was picking what they thought to win and, like, was tryharding. Like, we tried uh, Ana Lucio comps. The reason behind the Ana Lucio comp was the nano boost. The nano boost... So, you get ult charge... You get ults way less often in Overwatch 2. Uh, but nano boost, in particular, is so strong. Like, it is... It is arguably, in my opinion, the or one of the strongest ults in the whole game. That That's my hot take, is there was nothing that she would make that wasn't, like, win the team fight. Like, it was Sojourn, like, Nano Sojourn, win the team fight. Nano Tank, win the team fight, as long as, like, they knew how to hit their keys on their keyboard. Um, <laughs> like, Nano... Uh, 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 Tracer, like, everything actually had a lot of value. Uh, so I think not Anna was actually good for her nano boost. Now, everything else is where she was struggling a little bit, you know, like, you know, because you get, you get you're getting targeted and it's hard to like stay alive sometimes. Um, but we were always trying like different types of comps um, with those kinds of things in mind. And I, I would say that like teams were constantly running uh, Sombra, Bastion, uh, Sojourn, Cassidy, uh, Soldier, um, Hanzo didn't get as much uh, work because Hanzo current day, I say the break point is with his storm bow and like how much damage it does. Like he's like kind of a tank buster. He gets a little bit of a nerf. I think he only does 60 damage uh, instead of 70 on uh, what he did in the alpha. Plus the extra health that he had, like made it so that it wasn't like a tank buster anymore. Like you were able to survive and weather that part of the storm and then get healed back up later on or finish the fight. So Hanzo wasn't as like oppressively strong as he was before. Um, so I wouldn't say he got picked as often, but um, I, I would, I think I would pretty confidently say that most of the time people were playing what they picked to win. Um, now I think you can also throw in maybe like some skill factors. Like, you know, if, unless you had like Yedlin, did you have like the best ball players? Probably not. You know, like if you didn't have, uh like Emong plays Sigma or Diva. Like, did you have the best like Sigma and Diva players? Like, not probably not. Like, you could have had better. Like, you know, uh, I was like one of the few people that was playing Ryan, but we didn't really have any lot of Winston players. Like, I played Winston here and there, but I thought Ryan was 10 times better than Winston. So because I was trying to win, I picked Ryan over Winston. You know, so I didn't get as much Winston play. But if we had someone like Boger, who was really good at Winston, maybe Winston could have actually changed people's opinions because I think most people thought Winston was pretty, pretty uh pretty weak. I, my own opinion was Winston was weak, although had a now higher skill ceiling, which was big W. Um, you know, could that opinion have swayed if we had played against someone better? Totally understand how there's a lot of uh, hearsay kind of with that. But I will say in the scrims, it, it definitely seemed like everyone was trying their best to win. Uh, and when that was the case, um, you know, Ryan was good. Ryan was actually very good. And it, there was counterplay to it. Um, but Arissa was very good as well. Arissa had a lot of like give and take um I, most of the tanks other than i think like hog and sigma were very good um which could have changed by the time we get beta but regardless though I, I think that's very fair to say that uh there's definitely two different areas of like quick play versus you know those uh scrim games um and i would say the scrim games probably hold a little bit more weight fairly Sam, so did you play any scrims or was it all quick play for you I was mostly quick play for me, so I can't, I'm going to have to opt out of this one. But obviously, the scrim environment is going to be very different from quick play. But do you feel like some, what you've witnessed was 
uh, you know, your opinions same. are biased because of quick play? Or do you think like a lot of these no. will hold up when people are actually playing in a competitive way? They'll hold up. I mean, the games that were lopsided in quick play, it was pretty quick to tell and you just wouldn't try in those. The rest of them were like generally like pretty close. Like it wasn't like, like most of the time when you're playing your counterpart, like I'd get matched against Quake and we do very similar things throughout the whole game. Like it, it's pretty easy to tell and especially the highest star players, it's it's very easy to tell the difference between a game that you should just chalk mentally and a game that like was worth anything because the game where you just chalk it, you're spawn camping them because they, there's they egos too. Play. Like sometimes you just oh, don't there's ego duels. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh no, it it happens. It I, I would say that the the quick play was a pretty good reflection of where the game's at. So, hmm. Frito. Uh, I can't remember. I don't think I got in pugs at all. But I did play against a lot of high level players, man. Like Yidel on tank, I played against for a whole day, uh, which was. <laughs> Yidel grinded. Yidel didn't get off. Yidel did grind. Yeah. He, Dude, he, he is so good at every tank he plays, man. And it, especially when he shows up in these tournaments, I feel like he just pops off in every tournament he's ever played in. But uh, I played against him, played against Aspire, who's a <sighs> pro hit scan, just on Sojourn, didn't his miss. Yeah, his uh, was nasty. ML7 a little bit. So, like, I, I feel like I played against. Like I, it's kind of like what Sam said. Like I knew who I was playing against, so I knew what to expect. Uh, it does make the matchmaking a bit lopsided, but um, I had a different point. What the heck was it? I think I might have forgot. Unfortunately, yeah, we'll just move on for now. I think. Well, just take it, take your time, and think about it. So yeah, I mean, I think yeah, I think the thing is that, well, to summarize, it was it was easy to see who was playing their hero well and who wasn't. Like I remember. Oh, oh go ahead, go ahead, Frito. Uh, I was gonna say like the thing that I so, all right. Uh, meta diversity, all right? Yes. Um, I, I'm happy to have been, I think, I hope so. I hope I have been proven wrong about this to some degree where I was pretty certain. I mean, it was easy to say with the first patch of Sojourn was a little too strong and it was like, you only can play one comp. I thought that was going to maintain. It doesn't seem to be the case. It seems like there is uh, comp diversity in Overwatch 2 competitively, which is amazing. Um, what we want to see um, and I think the reason is there isn't enough, there isn't free stuff in the game, like Sam likes to say. Um, there isn't like I pick this comp and it runs itself. You have to execute just about every character, pretty much. Like any strat, you're gonna have to execute it. It, it isn't like this is a team comp that sustains itself and you just vaguely put it on the objective and win. There's none of that. Uh, so because of that, if you're better at one thing or another, it's a little easier to try to campaign for that style of play um but i do think it's fair to say that until the community really like levels up their teamwork certain more teamwork strats will take some time like in in quick play with a uh either against or with a symmetra i'm like i don't know what this character does anymore <laughs> like I, it, it feels like symmetra just doesn't fit in that deathmatchy environment right but if you have comms and you're teleporting the Rhine in and with a Lucio and what, like, it's just owl strats again. Like, apparently that's still working. So I'm excited for um, the competitive uh, diversity of Overwatch 2. But I do think there will, for the especially um, similar characters, there will be, like, an obvious one choice. So what I mean is, I don't think you're going, like, Doomfist, Winston, Ball... Are kind of all one thing. They're the tank that goes in, uh, diving, and then Rhino Risa probably are kind of the same thing as well. Like we play on the ground. Um, Zarya too. Good, yeah, Zarya as well. Like those are like more death ball. I play with my team characters. Like it's pretty. Like I'm gonna gamble that there'll probably be one definitive one of each archetype, um, which might be a little troublesome to balance, but. The fact that we even see multiple comps at all at a high level has me very excited, I think. But I'm I'm skeptical to what the solo queue community will be able to pull off in terms of that. Because you could make the same argument now with Overwatch 1 that, wow, Owl's playing all these different comps, whatever. But if it's easier to play deathmatch comps in, in, in ranked, well, that's all you're really ever going to play, right? So I think we might have a similar um, issue like that in Overwatch 2. Yeah, that brings up two points I want to make. I'm just going to flag them up so we can remember to go there. One is hero overlap, which is a thing to talk about. And, you know, I know you talked about this in your video, Frida. And the other one being the power of compositions in general. I'll go with the second one first, which is a Sam. Do you feel like compositions overall are less powerful in Overwatch 2?
He's thinking. Should I give you time to think? Do you want to take it to flats? They're less think? powerful. I, I think with the game, again, I, I think not necessarily like for the reasons you might think on paper. I think, again, when, when they will become important if the cooldown, the neutral cooldown flow that I talked about earlier tends to lean towards a certain comp. Like if there tends to be another like win-ish button, like a at its base ability, like it just gets enormous value consistently, you'll start to see that happen more. But I think the game is much more fluid in Overwatch 2, so comps don't matter nearly as much. It matters way more on how, you, like, your ability to actually make plays, um, at least in the alpha. And I think they're going to do a good job of kind of maintaining that openness of comp diversity. And again, like, I think it's very cool that a lot of different heroes can be played in a lot of different circumstances, depending on how you play it. I think that's what makes Overwatch such a beautiful game. And I think as long as they continue to capture that the way they have in the alpha, which is a, a, a great job with that, you're you're going to see a lot more comp fluidity in Overwatch 2, at least in comp. Like, because, you know, let's be real. People have been picking what they want to pick in, <laughs> in comp since the very beginning, right? So I think that you're going to see a lot more freedom of expression in, in, in that regard, but maybe not the tank role, though, because I think tanks will be able to hold lobbies hostage way more than uh, previously, because there's only one. If they, that person doesn't want to pick anything other than Hog. Good luck, Ethel. <laughs> Do you agree with that sentiment, Flats? Yes and no. Uh, I think in high level play, absolutely. Um, because the tank role is more impactful, honestly. Or it feels more impactful if you actually make your plays and just being the only tank, it's a little bit different. Like, you don't quite have the power of two tanks. It's more of like 1.3 tanks or maybe 1.4 tanks. Um, but they also have the same thing. Um, but I would say, though, at the same time, though, the, in, the DPS play in particular is much more effective. Um, like your picks matter even more. Like if you're a DPS that opens every fight with a pick. There is no turning that anymore unless you have like big ults to change it. And there's not many of those ults anymore. Like there was games that you may only get one, maybe two nanos. Like if it goes fast enough, like and I'm talking about like the quick play games, not like you play both sides. I'm talking about like you play one round, like the first half, like normal quick play rules. It would be rare if you got like two nanos or unless you were like held through most of first, held through most of second, held through most of third, and then like eventually finished it out Um, just because they charge so much slower so if you're a DPS that's consistently opening up with like a pick and you're like beating another DPS player, like you're going to pretty consistently win, um, which I think is different than Overwatch today. Like if you open up with like, let's say you open up with a pick on like, you know, I don't know, they're casting, you play Hanzo, right? You open up with a pick and boom, you get the pick. Then you engage in, well, guess what? The Brig has, uh, has 90 to rally. They whip shot one of your tanks back. They bash the other one that got too close. Now they're 96 to, ra or to rally. Uh, there's still immortality field still on the field. The tanks have just started to use their cooldowns. By the time everybody finishes their cooldowns, guess who's got rally? They got rally. If they pop rally, fight, it fights over. Your you, your pick did not mean shit. In Overwatch 2, it actually means a lot more. Yes, that can still happen if they have rally or, or they have any support ults or any ults like at all. I mean, like that, that can still change the fight. Like if you lose somebody and you pop some ults, sure, you can still win just like normal day Overwatch. But the chances you have those ults are much, much lower. So if you're a consistent DPS player who's consistently better than the other DPS on the other side, I think you win a lot of games. And I think that's a massive change to what I think they would feel right now is like they get into a game and they start losing like because your tanks suck, like your tanks not walking through choke, like just tank diff. You don't have that same restriction that you much might have once had. And I hope that'll also apply to the support role as well as it becomes more of a support role you're doing more damage you're playing more aggressive you're making more plays as opposed to passive healing constantly and trying to stay alive makes a lot of sense i think that that's a, yeah that ability for certain heroes i think particularly the new heroes to turn a fight even after it's it's down is very sort of you know typical of modern overwatch i'd say the and I, was, I know frito is something you've spoken about a lot where it's like you can get picks but if it's like a sigma and a and a brig or a bap alive like they're still going to turn the fight so do you kind of agree with the sentiment? Well, Samito kind of said that it potentially is a potential for a tank to hold people hostage. Flat says, you know, maybe that will evolve. Do you feel like comps are, you know, you kind of already lose this, but do you feel like comps are going to be as strong or do you feel like 
picks are going to be more important and everyone can kind of have their impact? Mm, level of play matters a lot. And also, I am basically banking that there will be a team mode in this game at some point. I, I kind of assume that. We don't, we haven't been told this, but um, it's just the writing's kind of on the wall when Blizzard's like promoting the these tournaments and stuff that they had been uh, scaling up to. I bet that's what we're going to see. I think so the content creation community probably is going to be more in tune with team play, whereas up to this point, it's mostly just been like solo, like the the sad solo queue uh, experience, uh, which is, is somewhat different. So I think we're kind of speaking in two different like universes uh, when we ask this question is my point, where... In ranked, I think in solo queue, the comp matters very little because in my experience, again, playing up against Yeedle, and I had, I, I don't know uh, what their rank was on tank against him, was just getting clowned each and every fight, okay? So I've lived this for a day of, of Yeedle clowning my tank. And then me, as either the support or damage I was getting for uh, getting both in those games, I have, like, a decision to make, like, do I try to help win the tank battle? And a thing I noticed about like the stats right away is like uh, if Yeedle's on Rhine and I Discord him, I'm used to in Overwatch 1, he can do nothing. Ha ha ha, <laughs> Discord orbs on you. You die like this now. That's what it used to feel in Overwatch 1. Now it's like, well, he's got enough stats to like still take space, still pin my tank or get a pin and kill a thing. And then he's just walking around. Then he's like, ha ha, I'm holding Discord and killing your team. So I'm like, okay, let me adjust this a little bit. Then I realized, okay, well, if Yido goes this way, what's the other way? <laughs> and and it's going to be a phrase that maybe I, I use, but like find your frags. This is my advice. If you're a squishy character, no matter what's going on in the tank battle, whether it's a Doom Fist killing your, your teammate or whatever, you as a squishy need to find your frags. So whatever fight you're taking that you think you can't win, go get the target that you could win. And this is what makes a character like Lucio triple S tier, in my opinion, I think, because the maps are so vertical. There's so many places to go. Like repositioning and going to fight something else is amazing. So as a Lucio player... I could be trying to help the tank or then I just go dual sniper or something. And and that can start to swing the fight back. Now, the, the principle of like, if you're Zen in that situation, it's kind of the same, but you, ideally you want to go find a duel that you can go take and win. And again, it's, it's, it's big. Dueling is at the forefront of the game, which is what has me so excited. It does require you to do that support players, but I, that like, that's so much better than the flow chart overwatch of, get the shield down, then we have to combine ults to kill anything. Like, that's... No, 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 no. Like, that's that, that's not what I want to be playing. I can't remember if I'm still answering the question anymore. No, SPM. you are. No, you <laughs> uh, what, are. what subject are we on? Uh, oh, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I've seen that exact scenario of, like, tank diff. Um, because there's only one of them, the maps are big, you, you can still... Um, go find other value but it, it may require you to be on some of those more self-sufficient picks I, perhaps because it may be that like zen needs a brig teammate or so, like we're saying essentially in order to to feel uh he can do that as bap i felt i felt bap was like insane but again like i don't mm -hmm. know if i was playing against good enough enemies like against the top tier dps maybe I wouldn't feel BAP was so good because uh, in quick play, I'm jumping up and shooting IGN journalists out of the, the sky, I think, um, <laughs> as uh, with, with Batiste. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. I can heal and shoot at the same time. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Like, like the thing that I was thinking about with um, supports especially is like, it's just, I kind of said this earlier, but um, they they compared to like sojourn who kind of vaguely charges up a railgun and insta kills you like supports don't really do that like it, it is harder to get value on support now because a lot of that support kit like zenyatta or ana throwing a nade or whatever used to be impactful at like an easy skill floor place shooting it into a tank well now the tanks are spinning and knocking things out of the way and have extra health and are overstated like like tanks are just harder to engage with so that means the support position uh, becomes uh, that much harder. But if you are the skill level of a, 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 if you do get the skill, you can find those kills to swing the fight um, if you outplay someone. But it, it's it's very active. There's nothing passive about it. Mm -hmm. Do you guys agree with that sentiment, Samido and Flats? Mm. I'd yeah. say so. 
Okay. Well, the kind of other thing that I mentioned was the hero overlap, which I know something Frito has spoken about. But do you feel like, because Frito said in his video, just a paraphrase, not to speak for him, but, you know, that a lot of the tanks, for example, and he said this earlier in the podcast as well, like they kind of do the same job. You know, the, the mobile tanks do the, do the jumping in and engaging thing. There's kind of the anchor tanks and then, you know, there's like the, the hog. <laughs> so is that something that you think is going to be like a thing going forwards? And if so, do you think it's a good thing, bad thing? Uh, I'll take it to flats first. I don't think I quite understand the question. What do you mean by anchor tanks, engaged tanks, and hog? Well, basically, what Frito's alluding to, and Frito again, c come in if I'm... Well, the devs have said you. this. Well, yeah, let's just make sure, like, I, I'm not just making this up either, but the devs have said this as a example of struggles introducing a character like Orisa to the game. Like, they originally, they wanted a anchor... Her first name was Ankora because they wanted an anchor-style tank like Reinhardt. But they... They also had a design f philosophy where there couldn't be ability overlap. Like they wanted every hero to be fully unique. This is another um, criticism that I've seen in, in a lot of comment sections as well, where they became like a lot of fans or, or you know, enough of them to leave comments anyway, like that, where the, like the um, hero fantasy of Kaz playing that character or being a fan of them or whatever they're all very unique where they do distinctly different things where Orisa like wants to hide on a high ground. Whereas Ryan wants to go in, right? They're, they're, they're both like the main tank kind of, but they do entirely different things. Whereas in Overwatch two now, it's pretty obvious to me anyway, that like, um, although Doom's a dive tank and Orisa is more of a brawler, let's say like they eat damage and they got a stun. And they could do some damage this way. Like they all kind of have, they're more like League of Legends characters where they have a dash and a stun and a thing and a DPS dump and whatever. Like, like there's a, that's like the, let's say the language of the game is the, the characters have overlap in the way they express their play. Whereas in Overwatch 1, they tried to make everything like entirely different. Where when you keep adding characters, you could see how you run out of either relevant or good play styles. Where yeah, we can have double shield as a bunker archetype to the game, but did anyone want it? And does anyone miss it in Overwatch 2? It's like, well, man, I just wish there was more shields to hide behind Overwatch. No, 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 we said that. So it's much better that Orisa spins a spear and throws a stun, even though that might be somewhat similar to what other characters do. All right, sorry. I don't know if that's an over explanation, but um, I am using how the devs explained that journey. And this is like distinctly different now in Overwatch 2, now that there's lots of characters that eat, for example, like half of them <laughs> eat, eat, eat as tanks, eat, eat damage coming in like Diva and Sigma. Um, mm -hmm. But that's fine to me. Um, what do you think? I, I think with, I think with how they've kind of changed the way like CC works and the way utility kind of works is like the damage dealers are more focused on mobility and killing power and stopping power. Uh, tanks are more of your uh, middle ground of, you know, CC uh, engagement also has pretty good killing power, but not like absurdly so. Like Arissa's even, Arissa honestly doesn't do a lot of damage. Like I remember uh, when people were playing Arissa, they actually said that it wasn't worth shooting the other tank because you did so little damage as Arissa that you would never kill them. Um, it was way more effective to shoot other like, you know, the squishies and the DPS and the supports in the back line and stuff like that. But at the same time, though, you're kind of like you're 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 shooting at the uh, at the people in the back, but you also like are keeping their tank from getting onto your team. So it's like it's like a different style of, of play um, that's almost like a little bit of a hybrid. But however, though, she does such little damage at range that it's like she's not going to kill you, but she's going to be annoying enough that if you do end up getting in a fight, you're not going to be at full health or clo not that close to full health. So like, it'll give your DPS an advantage. And like, that's where Arissa like, kind of like, she's like, you know, she feels really good to play. She feels really good to play against. I would say it doesn't feel like you're getting cheesed. However, though, like she's not like this end all DPS play, like DPS, like the DPS are that is their role now is like the, the high damage dealers. Um, so I'm okay with them all having like something unique that helps them enable, push, stay alive, CC. Um, 
in their own way, I guess, if that makes sense. Like, uh, I, I would say it's a little bit, you know, with having three characters that can eat things is like, you know, like we're now pushing like the whole like how many is like, you know, how many things can everybody do at once? But on the flip side, though, it's very different now that it's only one tank doing it because in Overwatch 2 or sorry, in Overwatch 1, uh, you can have Sigma and D.Va right now or Sigma and Arissa like but like let's just say Sigma and D.Va for now. Um, because it's actually a pretty decent comp. Uh, there is like a solid like six seconds that like nothing can inter- in- even come near your team. Like, if your diva use all of her DM and then you use suck, and then your diva has probably about half DM back again, and then uses all that again, that the shield hasn't even come into play yet. You know what I mean? Like, there is just so much uptime of damage mitigation that it's too much time. Uh, but if it's only one tank, I'm totally open to it right now. I think it's fine. I think that it, it's actually high skill. I think that it uh, it makes you think, like, do I be selfish and use it to engage and go get kills? Or do I find a middle ground between getting kills and protecting your team? Or do you play super defensive and just enable people the whole time? I think it's okay. If I may uh, uh, paraphrase, I think, a little bit of what you said, which it might be implicit. And I think I agree with this. There is variety. So the truth is, yes, it's a similar job, but playing mm-hmm. it, it still feels different when you're using yes. a Sig Suck versus, like, so Sig gets health, Doomfist gets a better gauntlet, like Orisa does only projectiles and moves, like, so they're they're similar, but they're not so similar where it, 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 it isn't true to say it feels like you're playing the same character. It's just that I think the role of tank is all similar, is kind of the point. Whereas it used to be like Orisa wanted to stay miles away from the fight. Well, now right. all tanks kind of want to be in the fight, but in a good way. <laughs> they yeah. all do the they all do tank things as opposed mm-hmm. to well, here's a tank that barely tanks like and shoots and is a sniper or something. Like that that's just that's not how Overwatch 2 seems to be developed. And I, I'd agree with your your points as well, I think. I, I don't think it's a bad thing in any way. And it doesn't make the game feel samey either. I think all right, so. Uh, One example I thought of this, you might make the argument that Doomfist's uh, slam now is just Winston's leap, but it still doesn't feel like that due to the the completeness of what a character feels like. Like, in no way when I play Doom and I'm like, oh, I think I'm playing Winston now. Yes, they both want to go in and fight Squishies, maybe, so the role's similar, but the mechanics of Overwatch Heroes are so difficult and take so much mastery and... To master the complete kit and when you have all these different buttons you're, i don't think you're going to get the impression of like uh, i wish there was more diversity in this game or or, or gameplay diversity I, I i don't feel that i've seen a lot of people comment that but i i think that's just an assumption people are making that that it's, it's very uh, much an assumption yeah mm-hmm. it feels different because the the animations are different the strengths are a bit different it's just that all tanks tank now, yep. <laughs> I guess, maybe, is the better way to say it. You ready for the terse version of that? Check it. Go for you it. Guys, you guys just described the same thing. Tanks have always had a very similar play style, but the big crucial difference maker, and, and this is the biggest oversight, I believe, to what really led to the downfall of Overwatch 1, is that we ignored the means. The means as to how you get to the destination... So, like, you obviously, you have, like, a certain tank is designed to do certain things. So, like, the path to how it gets there, the means to how you get there are very, very different. Would you feel like you're on the same? So, your your job is to go from New York to Los Angeles, right? You're, you're taking a trip there. If At the end of the day, you as a passenger, you as a customer, you as a human being, your goal is to get from New York to Los Angeles. One person drives, one person flies, one person runs. You all get there. You get there at different times, right? Because different things are designed to excel in different ways. One person bikes. But your experience as to how you got there is going to be completely different based on how you actually traveled. And the big thing that I feel like we missed in Overwatch 1 is the means as to how characters got value. And that was very frustrating as a player to play. Like, Immortality, like, BAP gets the same value as, like, an Ana, right? They both heal. But what made a lot of the AoE healers so different is the means as to how they healed with, like, AoE healing or Brig is hitting the flail once and having Inspire for six seconds. Like, that was frustrating for a lot of people to play against. So, you know, it doesn't feel like there's overlap because the means as to how these heroes do things differently are, are, are so vastly different in how the game actually plays that there's absolutely zero sense of overlap. So, like, the means as to how the job gets done is, I feel like, the best way to summarize that, and I don't think it's a problem whatsoever. 
I like this little earthy analogy, Sam. I, I like the little travel, travel. Yeah, it's hands on, right hands on. We're trying to be hands on here. I don't know. We're now, working on it. I got a people... question. Go ahead, Frida. Maybe yeah. it's a separate thing, but like I, I maybe that is uh, another way to argue this point. But I, I wonder, and maybe Owl will show us this in a week or so. Like I don't with tanks having lots of abilities. Like it, on one hand, we were like, "Wow, Sigma new character does way too much." It's almost <laughs> like, yeah, but it's fun though. Well, what if we just had one tank and they all did too much? <laughs> like that's what Overwatch Two takes are. And but but I wonder with this like uh, overlap thing, I don't think mastering one equates to just oh no mastering the others, right? Like no the mechanics chance. are different enough. The timings yeah. and the targeting and your positioning might be a bit similar. Like your job is similar, but the, the Orisa stun throwing a javelin projectile is different than using the doom stun. It's just, they both have stuns. That is, different is kind of my point. Yeah. The execution of it. And I think that's maybe another thing that I'm really excited about, but like the, the skill ceiling of, of tank characters, especially with all the things you can do is, is really, really high. And I, I think it, you're going to, this goes to the balance and the uh, gameplay diversity point as well, because you have to be so good mechanically with a lot of these characters. Like I, I don't know if I want to necessarily just learn Doom, even if Doom's the best. Because if I could get away with playing Winston and I'm more comfortable with him, I want to see how far that takes me is my point. Like, it, like, will I feel if I am get up to GM and I'm playing Sam's Doom and it's Doom meta, will everyone be mad at me for playing Winston? Or am I just like a little different of a version of that? Because in quick play, I felt like as long as I land my abilities or whatever, I'm doing about as much as I could. But maybe that's just my ignorance on the uh impact of the game and like the the doom player might outpace him but i think we'll have to wait and see there's no way to tell um well i guess we'll find out in in like five (laughs) days right you know we'll find out i think so an owl for sure but i'm i'm skeptical to ranked if if you're gonna like hate that teammate of yours it would be a wonderful place if we feel like you, you can have the dive tank role be any of the options and not feel too bad about it. Whereas in Overwatch 1, I think like you pretty badly wanted to have the, the right tank or you just couldn't function, which sucked. Well, yeah, and I think to piggyback off your point and maybe complete the wider picture, because I think we're kind of alluding to, or at least me and Frito, I think are on the same page on this, is that ability overlap and hero overlap is good. And I think to, to round that point off as to why is that I think it makes it easier to fix the game if things go wrong. If like if yeah. all the tanks do are supposed to do a similar job, I think it's easier to tell when one of them is overperforming, right? It's much easier to say, actually, Sigma is doing too much of the whole eating thing. We need to just tone that cooldown back. Whereas one of the problems that Overwatch 1 has right now is that when a tank like Orisa overperforms, it becomes very difficult to, to tone it back in a way that feels fair because you're like, oh, well. There's other things that influence it. Exactly, right? It's like there's too much other variables. Like we tone this two back, she's useless. If we give it like a, two, a little bit of a buff, it's overpowered. And mm-hmm. it's so like sometimes the, the role of a tank has been so unique that it's been like, no, this is just a completely different thing. So we're completely destroying this play style if we nerf this character and the whole way Overwatch is played gets shifted. Whereas again, I think if like the tanks are occupying a certain archetype, and I think this is something that like Valorant is is doing a lot of and i think another thing to add to that is that you know the, the mm. people who are fearful of well if the tanks are kind of doing the same job will it just be i'm playing doomfist winston and it's just the same hero well again even in like a game like valorant where your guns are exactly the same thing people still struggle shifting heroes at the highest level because of the nuances of each character and what they provide and i think that it's good to go in that direction where you can kind of fit and you can fit every tank into an archetype and then that way it's easier to kind of tune their balance knobs when when one is clearly being picked way too much over the others. Core um, fundamentals are all very similar, which is what we struggle with. And I think that is going to make balancing the game way more consistent and I think fun mm-hmm. as well. And, and, and a consistent play experience. Like, like, you know what to expect. You know, like one part about teaching the game which always felt impossible is that the rules would change all the time of what you should do <laughs> right like like well you shouldn't sit the back line well now actually you should huddle around lamp well, and now you should maximize brick ceiling now you should it's just like it's always different right Watch. and yeah. and now it's like i feel no matter what they add to the game and no matter how unbalanced anything is it's still the hero shooter game which maybe brings us to the deathmatch <laughs> argument yeah. like yeah. the, the but, means yeah go ahead yeah sorry but at least you can you have to mechanically play the game. So that means 
mastering your hero, I think you'll have more ownership of that skill set. And I think it'd be less likely that you feel you lose it all when there's a new addition or a balance change, which which should give us some much needed competitive stability to this game. Because yeah. there's rules now, like the, the stuns, and we're going to call them out if they start to change this, but the, the stuns of the game mostly go to tanks for the most part, unless it's really expensive in your kit. Like you better like be a very weak character if you're a squishy with any kind of disable, I think, or it be balanced in a way. Like I, I'm assuming they're going to keep that consistent. And if they do, well, then we always know what to expect from each role, which is is great. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think I think one thing I want to bring into, and I want, I want to take this to Flats first, is that a lot of people are going to listen to this and be like, <clears throat> you guys are, are agreeing a lot. You're all sound very optimistic. You're loving Overwatch 2. And I think a lot of people who have been kind of, I feel like a lot of the communities on the outside looking in at this point, right? We're not none of, none of the general community got to play in Overwatch 2. And even going towards the, uh, the beta, people are like, will I get in? Will I not get in? I don't know. And I think there's a lot of skepticism amongst the community is how the devs are going to handle both the how they handled the alpha and how they will handle the Overwatch 2 game going forwards. It feels like amongst this talk, people will be listening and saying, well, you guys seem to have a lot of faith in this, in how the devs are handling things now. Do you feel like there's been a shift in emphasis from how the devs are handling stuff that's giving you kind of this optimism that maybe we haven't had in the past? And Flats, I'm going to take it, with, take it to you first. I think this is both a complicated and really simple answer at the same time. Ready? When we all hated the game and we all said it was trash and we always said that things were wrong with it, everyone agreed. Pretty much everyone was like, yep, these are the problems. Now that we have are able to tell you that we've played it, we can tell you the good things and we can also tell you things that maybe that weren't that good, but they're being improved upon. Why think that after all these years that there's been this radical shift what, you think Blizzard broke out the paychecks and started greasing everybody's pockets because you're just fooling yourself? I have still, to this day, made more money doing Apex events than I've made Overwatch events. I did one Apex event. I, <laughs> I, I, tested, I tested Ash before it came out. That's it. That's all I've done. So uh, now that that's out in the air, um, why change? Why? Because we're not because we're not all agreeing on the same opinion. We only we, we only trusted our opinion because it was similar to yours. Well, if ours were similar, and now it's changed in a radical shift for most people, and we can tell you that we've played something that we believe is good, and we agreed before, why think now that all of a sudden you wouldn't maybe agree with us still? Now that we can say publicly, that we've tried this fun thing and publicly say there is hope at the end of this tunnel and that we're four days away from beta. And I can't, I don't know how the beta thing is going to work. You know, Andy said yesterday that on my stream, you know, they're going to start like, you know, you're going to start getting emails or, or you're going to get like notifications like day of, right. It'll start rolling out like the 26th. Um, so I'm sure there's going to be like an FAQ or something about that soon. Um, but like for the general public, but it, they've already started to talk about it. And like they came, Andy came on my stream last day with Emong, Fitzy, and Karku to level with us and talk about these things that like they can talk about and whatever they couldn't talk about, they didn't talk about, you know? And it's like, I just, I just want to like frame this one last time. If we all agreed before and we all knew what the problems and now we're saying the problems have changed or they're not there anymore and they're fixed and there's a lot of good and we can literally say that we have tested it ourselves. Why are we all the bad guys when a year ago we were the good guys when we agreed, but all of a sudden we've changed our opinion because we have new information that will hopefully and be in your hands soon. And if it's not in your hands right away, hopefully soon after that, why are we the bad guys? Like, maybe, like, the smallest little bit of faith in us. You don't have to faith in the team. I, the, the devs got to prove it themselves. Everyone said that. They apologized, and they want to see action. And Andy said that on my stream yesterday. We're done apologizing. We're not doing a YouTube apology video. 
we're like we're not doing the whole like crying on camera they're done apologizing they're here for action and that's where they are now we haven't really tried to steer you wrong for years why are we the bad guys sam you're that's used to I, being the bad guy what do you think <laughs> I have fallen yeah, on the tough. damn sword for, th I don't think there's anybody who was as stubborn as I was about a lot of this stuff. And I knew exactly, I, I knew that that would be my role in the community. And the reason for that is I watched a game server. I put my heart and soul into die before my eyes and I could do nothing to stop it. And I swore to myself that never again would I ever fail a community like I failed Mindplex because I didn't step up to the plate. And, and, and talk about the core issues and hammer them home until leadership listened. And I, sw I swore an oath to myself when I was 19, 18, 19, that I'd never let that happen again. And once the issues and we started to see an Overwatch happen, happen, I, sc I screamed all the way to the top of the chain in ways that I doubt any of my colleagues would probably ever go for the right reasons. I only reason I did, I was young and dumb and, you know, I, I, I didn't want to lose another community that I cared about filled with friends that I'd made along the way. Because I, I really do believe that this game is going to be the one to bring the world together in a way that we've never seen. I don't think, I think it's fair for the community to be skeptical about a lot of creators and their opinions. Be like, oh, the game's good. You cannot say that for me, right? Because if the game's been bad, I have been damn loud about it. And the difference between back then and now is that the devs stepped up to the plate and he's talking about action and when they deliver they freaking deliver and they know that now they're not stupid these guys their heart and souls are put into this game and for the first time in three years i felt the soul of the game again i felt like i could sit down after every single play and look back and say damn that's my fault i didn't die to bullshit this game i fucked this up here i mess this up there and it's on me as the player and the devs looked at the core issues they changed them and this game is about to knock your socks off so if you want to sit there and doubt it by all means doubt them by all yeah. means because you're about to get knocked out of the park and i'm ready for it so listen, folks, that, you know, I, there's a lot of people who can doubt whatever they want about the Overwatch team. I don't think anyone's doubted as much as some people here on this podcast where we've just let you know how we think to the day that we freaking die. This game is good. These devs turned it around. They understand the problems. They've laid the foundation. And if you want to keep doubting it, by all means, as Andy said, let them show you because they're about to knock your socks off. And I, I, I'm all in on that one. All freaking in, baby. All freaking in. Tear, tear, a lone tear down my cheek here. When Samir gets going, it's a thing of beauty. And I think in future podcasts, I, I, yeah, I need sorry, to have a little soundboard that. button that just starts epic music oh, in the no. background. <laughs> and Samir is so wrong oh, against him, Sid. Go, going oh. off. Frito, do you agree with the uh, inspirational Samito? Dude, both these guys popped off. How do, how do you follow these guys, the, uh, leaders of the community, uh, <laughs> laying it out really good? Uh, yeah, I, I echo both these sen sentiments um i was i was thinking like back to the last time we had a call probably months ago at this point and i didn't have a beard like life was entirely different but um we, you know we were pretty upset right like it was right before i think that we uh found some things out and it it looked dire let's put it this way we were like this is a wasteland like we need some said? rations huh do you remember would you remember what you said uh, yeah, I said a lot of things. I mean, I so we're gonna, you said we're going to look back at this time and we're going to go, this was the darkest stage of Overwatch. Yeah. And I think we can look back now. We're not out of the tunnel yet, but like we're at the edge of the tunnel. Like the sunlight's hitting our feet now. We can look behind us and go, that was the darkest time. <laughs> I love these it metaphors, guys. We, we're, we should like have a poetry club. These metaphors are killing me. <laughs> I can snap. Well, I can all snap the years all day. of pain have made us like you know yeah. like we're just so philosophical and poets. I'll, yeah, it's play, play the the Kelly Clarkson song. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> Stand a little. So that's a nice little. I edit, love how you picked that, Kelly Clarkson and not say my man Kanye West. I got the album covers in the back. Hey, Kanye's you could have gone for like, the some, yeah. You could have gone for the street cred, but you you just straight up added yourself with the Kelly Clarkson. Dude, song. don't what? Who's gonna hate on <laughs> Kelly Clarkson? Continue, Frito. Get nah, 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 Kelly Clarkson nah, slaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Continue, Frito. I'm sorry, but yeah, go ahead, Frito. Yeah, the, I, adding anything is difficult when you guys covered so so much. But like, I, I'll I'll say, um, you know, I went out on a limb and 
said Overwatch One could never be balanced, and we have to have hero bans. And it looked, and I was proven wrong. And I think it sounds like I'm about to be proven wrong about this game too. Which, you know, it just like Sam, uh, I'm loud, a little quieter than Sam. I'm older. I have uh, learned <laughs> back when I had hair, I was just as loud. But uh, <laughs> you know, I think I think hopefully both of us take pride in, in admitting uh, when they do step up to the plate. And um, part of that is like in the alpha, for example. You know, certain strats looked unplayable. Um, and then they were just like, well, here's some stats and some buffs. Like, like Winston's bubble's better. And Ryan has 650 health now. Does that work? Can you play Rush now? <laughs> like, how much health do you need? It's like, it's like Jeff Goodman's just, just he's like a, the rich uncle on Christmas. He just keeps pulling out checks. He's just like, here, here's a buff. Here's a buff for Ryan R. You, you need that? Yeah, yeah. Don't spend it all in one place. Right? Like, like eventually they're just patching the game fast enough where... It seems to be working, and um, I'm very happy to to hear that Owl has competitive diversity. And that was my only like main criticism, right? Where I'm like, it's a simpler game; it'll just get solved in ten minutes, and only one comp. But it, that hasn't been the case. And if that's not the case, well, what do I have? I, I got nothing else to complain about. I'm never getting hero bands because <laughs> we 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 actually won't need them if if it is balanced that well. And um. It, it's due to, I think, the other philosophy improvements to the game that they've made, basically. It's like, it, it it's a lot of these factors coming together where the strats need execution, heroes need mastery, and the game is more in front of you, makes more sense. So because of that, it, it is looking like the dream scenario where you can express yourself with your own play style and a lot of heroes have a fighting chance in that. And and that's a, a wonderful place to be. So I'm most excited to see Owl and what actually gets played on stage. Because it's one thing for them to be like, oh, we're scrimming Genji. Like, how many times have Owl fans have heard that a team is scrimming Genji and it never comes out in the actual <laughs> game? So so I'm optimistic now. I, I'll, I'll reserve my right to be like, uh, I was right uh, if, if it turns out there's only one comp you can play. But... Uh, early signs are good. And I think as long as they keep um, balancing quickly um, and adjusting to when things get figured out, um, we'll be in a good place. But I think th the long and short of it is like the game is structured in a way where it's balanceable. Whereas earlier we were saying like, well, there's too much complexity. There's too much interconnected parts. The team comps are too elaborate. How do you balance one character when 10 things affects why Oris is the best tank? Like it's, it's mm -hmm. just too hard. Whereas now the, each role does its own job. And so that means you can tune it with the role passives or because heroes aren't as interconnected, there's still a bit of that, but uh, they're not so interconnected that you actually can probably isolate one of the five things they do and tune that as opposed to everything having like a massive ripple effect in the meta. Just uh, so I, I'm optimistic. And I, and I think the way I would summarize it, Sam, actually you go first. Uh, re yeah, real quick. I just want to talk on what Frito said. First of all, Frito Con flats and I like bigger heads, dude. First of all, you've helped us so much, man. Like I'll give yourself some damn credit. You've been around for this community from day one and you're like a mentor to me at least. So uncle Frito, shout out to uncle Frito for being there from freaking day one. This Frito is one of the best people to keep it real and and just speak his mind in a very articulate fashion that we all can't do. So don't sell yourself short. I just I just wanted to say that right Yo, there. Big, no big shout out to Frito. We all need to listen to Uncle Frito a little bit more. That's the, <laughs> the Godfather. That's the of Overwatch line. content creation. Not, yeah, true, true, actually true. Sorry, you go ahead, SBB. No, I was going to say, like, to summarize the point about why we seem to have so much more faith in devs, I remember in the last podcast, we kind of had this thing about when the facts change, I change. Like, I remember Flats was explaining that, and I kind of presented that quote. And it's it's like this. We've been playing Overwatch for years, and the last couple of years, what have been our complaints? Like I said, again, oh, the game is hard to watch. Too many shields and crap in your face. Too many things that shut you down. Meta staleness. The devs don't listen to us when we give them feedback. What are they doing in the alpha? They made it easier to watch. They made it less complicated. There's individual autonomy. There's no hard one thing that you have to play. And they listened to us when we were like, this stuff is broken. Can you change it? And in a week, they were like, yeah, sure. How about this now? As the Oprah Jeff Goodman Frito described, where he's like, you get a buff. You get a buff. You get a buff. Right? So when they listen to us and when they listen to the feedback that we said is a problem with the game and they fix it, then we, then we turn around and we're like, yeah, okay, the game is good now. 
So, like, I guess uh, to some extent, maybe people are so used to content creators being negative about Overwatch that when we turn around, we're like, actually, we played Overwatch 2. It was really good. They're just like, how much are you guys getting paid? Yeah. <laughs> I saw your check I, flash. I, I, I need some more. negotiation going, so, you know. <laughs> I need your agent. No, I mean, uh, yeah. I think I think the, the facts have changed. The way the devs are behaving has changed, and it might be hard for people to accept. I totally understand that because you necessarily have not experienced it in the way that we have which is why we're perhaps living in different realities to some extent, right? Yeah. The community is living in a different reality than what we've experienced. We've seen all this stuff, and I think we just can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it as well. Yeah. And I want to take it to something I know Sam wanted to bring up, which is the quote that I know Frito loves that Jeff gave before he parted us, may he be succeeding whatever he's doing right now on a beach somewhere in the Caribbean. Redefining the sequel. Redefining the sequel with Overwatch 2. That's what Jeff said before he went. His little parting words to us. Samito, do you think that we are in the process of redefining the sequel? Yes. Yeah, we are. Um, I mean, I think 5v5 ended up being much better than I thought. You have PvE, which we haven't heard anything about yet. They're, they're, like, th these guys have something up their sleeve. Like, there's no, like, this is it's starting to freak me out. They're like Santa coming down the chimney, and my stocking's going to have a lot of, of different sweets or, or socks or whatever. You know, they, they're they throwing everything. They, they might as well be at Costco. Like, they, there's nothing these people don't have, apparently. Um, the one thing I would like to see is a BR, because that would be for, full circle, because what you can do oh, with boy. Overwatch is make it a lot like Here, a... Uh, again. This is the bingo. Yeah, I need to make I'm this bingo. No, 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 Right, and on top of five v five, like you, the, the entire game flows change. You're getting different major formats and, and uh, game genres. Almost is that the right word I'm looking for, guys? Genre, like a, mm -hmm. that, whatever it may be. With Overwatch as a concept, as an IP at the core, and they're expanding out, kind of like in a giant spider web, like a Skyrim skill tree of just like you know, Overwatch at its core. You got like stealth over here, whatever it may be. So after playing it, I feel like. You know, I feel like they actually did it. Son of a gun. Here we are. Wow. It's, it's, it, I'm excited. I'm excited. Platts redefining the sequel minus the BR. Uh, I, uh, there's, so there's still going to be people that go, well, we waited three years for an, um, an update. Wah. It's still going to happen no matter what. Yeah, like, yeah. unless, unless like, Unless like the PvP and the PvE came out at the same time, which we know it's not. They told us that they're decoupling it and they're trying to get us the PvP sooner as opposed to waiting for everything. Um, people are going to constantly go, we waited three years. But like realistically, like they can do so much more now. You know, they can do so much more now than they used to be able to with like their old Overwatch engine and stuff like that. And so it, I don't know if I want to use the word defining the sequel yet. Um, it definitely is a sequel, but because it's still so similar in what you see, not what you play, people are going to argue it all day long. Like, are they going to be right? In my opinion, no. It is definitely the next iteration of the game, and it plays so different, and it feels so different, and I'm sure the new characters, whenever we hear about new characters, which, you know, at some point in the future, hopefully we do, uh, plus we play Sojourn in the beta, like, in the reworks, if it, I don't know, I doubt anyone else is getting reworked. I don't know, like maybe, but um, we'll see. When all of these things finally happen, the game is going to look nothing like Overwatch 1, but they're going to look at it and go, well, you're still playing Ryan on King's Row. That's just an update to Overwatch 1. Huh? It's just like, it's just like unhinged TikTok comments, dude. Like they're just going to, they're just going to be, they're just going to be loudly wrong. There's nothing you can do about it. Not worth your time. Yeah, and I say Frito for last because I know Frito. This is a, a a sentence you've loved to unpack in the past. Redefining mm. the sequel. Where do we start? I don't think they're going to use that. I I don't think they're going to be trying to pray, like uh, reutilize that phrase anymore. Like I think that's sort of a dead concept to them, um, because that failed for them. Because that what so the I I I feel like there's two avenues to this question where 
the original promise was that you would buy the next thing with the PVE and it would at the same time update the original game. That's what with the free update. So I, I'm assuming everyone's just like they haven't said business model or how this is going to work exactly, but we know pretty sure PVE is not coming for a while. So does that mean are we just updating Overwatch 1 and then any new players have to buy Overwatch PvP 1.5 or whatever? Like, I'm really confused on all that. So I, I don't know if the uh, redefine the sequel thing makes as much sense as they originally intended, and I doubt they'll try to parrot that one ever again <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> after, after the failure. But, like, like, do I think, like, is the amount of content sequel worthy? It kind of depends on your perspective, I think, because um, being in, like, the COD community originally many years ago, um, when a new COD would come out, like, it would be, I mean, it's still the case now, but hit or miss whether the maps or guns or mechanics of the game were any good <laughs> uh, or if a lot of them felt copy-pasted or whatnot. So, like, your expectations of, like, a, a roster update for a FIFA game or something, like, is that a sequel? Like, <laughs> often, I mean, that's roster updates, like a derogatory term. So um, it's somewhere in between those ideas, I think, for sure. Um, but I, I think more it's like they're just turning Overwatch 1 back on again, at least. And I'm excited about that. Like, the actual terms of it don't matter too much to me, I'd say. Um, yeah. I'm very happy with what we're getting. I don't know if it feels like a, a sequel, though. Like, I don't know if I would... I don't know if I really want to be calling it a sequel, but we just sort of have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think there's clearly some ambiguous marketing as well in terms of it's not shouting from the rooftops that it's Overwatch 2. I think I think we're still finding our feet as well, where it's like, is this Overwatch updated? Overwatch 2 is the PvE coming later? Like, what? where is that standing? So I think all of that is is definitely still ambiguous, and you're right. I think I'm sure there's a lot of things that the devs would do over if they had the hindsight of what's happening. They said themselves, yeah. But yeah. what's what's exciting? We don't know what is we're that... getting. We don't know what we're getting. Is there new <laughs> yeah. heroes? Is there more heroes? Is there more maps? Is there more anything? I don't know. I don't. I. I... I'm about to wait and see. I, like if there's 12 new heroes, then I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a that's the third more of the game. Yes, I, I don't think there is though. So but here's we'll find what's out. Andy hinted here's at that stuffy last night and said that oh, there's dang. definitely more stuff planned. So. And that's kind yeah, of what I was going to say is that what I'm excited about is that we played Overwatch 2 Alpha and we were happy and we're, we're kind of scratched the surface at the moment. Like we got one new hero and then some changes to the, how the game plays. And we're like, this game feels more sane. It feels better. We haven't even gotten like the many new heroes that have been promised, the many more new maps that will constantly come. PvE, we, have, we haven't even had a sniff of PvE yet. Like there's so much more to come in what will be Overwatch 2. So actually, we've had we talked about the darkest times. We're looking at a pretty good timeline now, by the looks of it, like a pretty good future here, where it's like stuff is coming out mm -hmm. that we should be good back in the game. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that is what I want to lead us to for our little concluding sentiment, because I know we've taken up a lot of your time, and I appreciate it as always, guys. The beta soon. What is it? Four days. Four days. Four now? days. Four, Four days. days. I figure out what I'm going to do for the next three days. <laughs> Hibernate. <laughs> what? Is our expectations going for the beta and what are you kind of looking forward to? And I'm going to take it to you first, Flats. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone come back. That's my number one. I can't wait to queue up and see names like XQC, see names like Tim the Tapman again, see names like Seagull, see, see so many, many names. And I am very confident. I don't, I don't know if you've looked at the directory, but like, there's some pretty big names that have been just coming in and playing some like quick play and regular Overwatch like at random hours of the day, like for like two, three hours. I don't know, like keep an eye on it. You'll see it sometimes. It just randomly the category just spikes up really high real quick and then comes back down. It's like, yeah, Overwatch 1 ain't really that hot right now, but they are just kind of excited for it. Like people are people are getting jittery a little bit in other communities of like, okay, like I'd like to see what that's like. I'd like to check it out if I can, you know? Um so I think it's going to be a very surreal feeling when you start to play and you are so excited because you know what? We haven't had an Overwatch 1 in a long time. When you queue up and everyone queues up on their mains and everyone pretty much knows each other and you're having a blast. That is something that we haven't had in at least three years, 
maybe four. Yeah. That will be a surreal experience for everyone here and for the viewers who maybe aren't in the beta or even for the players that get into the beta that have never experienced it before. 100%. It was like, it was that feeling in the alpha, which was great, right? Like queuing into the alpha, it was like, oh, everyone in this lobby is lovely and I, I kind of know them and they're all really nice yeah. and not going to flame me for random shit. I mean, I talked about this yesterday. Like, I mean, it's kind of out there now as I bumped an X, you see a bunch in the alpha and uh, actually he played, he tried Doomfist. It must've been like his first Doomfist game because we were fighting on the outside of the Toronto map, um, which by the way, like I don't, the names, I know the names, of, like the cities. I don't remember the names like of the maps themselves, but, uh, Elong was playing tank and I was, it was me, him and someone else. And we were fighting on the outside, like where like the, the fall off the map area is. And he didn't have his shift and E swapped yet. You know, like the shift is the, the jump and the E is the power block. Everyone shift it or put it back the other way. He just jumped off the map and died. <laughs> and we all stood there and stared at him. And he just started typing for like a minute. Just like, <laughs> there's the whole feed just filled up and it felt just like 2018 yeah. all over again. And I can't tell you how tingly of a feeling it was. It was so funny to see him just explaining himself of what happened. And we're just like, I was like, damn, I remember this. I've been in these games before, you know? <laughs> like, I, I can't wait for that again. Samito, hope and expectations for the beta? Oh, man. Oh, I'm just happy to be myself again and not have to be like, what are we doing, right? Because, like, you know, I, 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 I kind of told myself that that'd be my role, but I'm not taking that in Overwatch 2. I'm just going to be myself and enjoy the game. I'm, I'm excited to get back into the competition side of things in terms of, like, just streaming every day, like the thrill of the game when people care, like not being the odd one out because I'm hard comming, like it's Al Grand Finals with a junk rat one trick and like a, three people out of voice just because I want to win a rank game. <laughs> like uh, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I, I feel like for the first time in since 2019 after I finished like my first contender season, like I feel very calm and at peace. Like I feel like the calm before the storm. Like I, I can't even, I, I can't even explain it to you. I'm just because I, I, I know at this point that I don't have to worry about them being able to make a good game because they can make it. And I feel like for the first time in like three years, I can really just focus on myself and not worry about it. And that's a great feeling. So listen, anyone else wants to take up the reins of uh, yelling at the top of their lungs about bad changes? You guys can do that next game because I'm not doing it. That was that was the best. I'm retiring. I'm like Uncle Frito here. I'm I'm getting old, man. I'm gonna need a cane to walk to my bathroom next year. All right. So I'm I'm just excited to focus on the game, focus on myself, and know that they're gonna be able to deliver. So yeah. So transitioning our roles into the older older folk and yeah, the, listen, it's got to happen eventually. Yeah, <laughs> it has to happen. Boomers, Frito, your hope and expectations of the Overwatch Two beta. Um, I'm excited to see the general gaming community what they have to say about the game because at the moment I think a lot of the people who have seen the footage and given the, mm, the whining about it are like diehard Overwatch fans, the ones that are left that like will like it no matter what and, and aren't needing convincing. Whereas a big percentage of the a bajillion players that have left the game, I think will be excited to play it when they when they see it and and you know their top streamers are, are playing it and whatnot. Like I think it's gonna make a good impression on the because right now we're kind of just in our bubble. I mean, um, you know, Flat's video did very well on YouTube yesterday, but for the most part, most Overwatch content I think is like still in the Overwatch bubble. Whereas when the other streamers come back and uh, there's more energy around the game, there'll be a, like a lot of people that maybe have a passing interest in, in it will be introduced to what I think is a very approachable, fun, and like, you know, all the good things we've said this whole time. The other thing I'd say is I'm excited for the devs to be like have their energy towards this again. Because <laughs> there's like a while where like they're like, we're, they almost like denied it in a way like like it felt like i, I don't know maybe you, i'm misremembering this but it was like we're still updating the game <laughs> like 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 but but you haven't changed it and this this has been broken forever and then you literally stopped adding heroes it's like well we still like it, they had to like lie out of one side of their mouth i think and that's just sort of the way blizzard runs their company right where 
they don't like to admit any faults and uh, all you have to do is read any news headline to know how how blizzard gets run sometimes uh behind the scenes but now i feel like the devs are empowered and like we know what they're doing because they're like well i'll work on this and then we'll say like let's address this problem here's a solution so it's like we're we're on the same page finally whereas for i don't know years it felt like they were off away uh, on top of a mountain working on a game that's not even out yet right and they're like well let's re refocus our energy towards um the pvp game again which is what we all want to be playing we want to play the other game too probably as well but you know like manage that resource you know and mm -hmm. it's amazing what they're able to do i'm still confused how long it took them to make a lot of this by the way like is this like because why haven't we had this before okay fine just I don't want to be better about it. <laughs> ship never, sailed, never, never ship mind sailed, never mind because ship ship it We're... seems like it, it went kind of quick doesn't it doesn't you know, it we like can't it? roll swap we can't roll swap all right you're taking my job now come on man i'm not we're not there yet all right hold this this is <laughs> Well, I hope they keep it up, and if they do, we're, we'll we'll we're in for like a very fun multiplayer game. I think that that's going to be competitive with other games, as opposed to the also rand game we kind of are in the ecosystem of uh, competitive games right now. So, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think it would be great to see Overwatch just kind of be a game in the industry again, be a, a presence in the industry again. And me personally, I'm just so excited for you guys to play. Like that's it. I'm tired of. Telling you guys about what's coming, telling you guys that Overwatch 2 is good. I want you guys to play this game. I want you guys to feel and understand that why we're so excited, why we think it's better, why we think all these things are improvements. I just want you guys to play and have fun with us, and I want to be part of a thriving community game. They can fight themselves, then, then they can yell at each other when the one say that it's good and the other one say it's bad, and then you guys can fight gladiator style. We can all watch <laughs> and laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Turn the tables and put them on a podcast. Hey, we, and we just sit there style. Chance. Yeah, there's some horses right across the river I can run and grab, too, so it's no big deal. <laughs> no deal. All right, guys. Well, I've appreciated your company so much. It's always been a lovely chat. I think it's crazy to see the turnaround. You know, we're all so optimistic now. Maybe, what was it, like four months ago, we were all kind of doom and gloom. So <laughs> it's a great timeline we're living in. Like I said, long may continue. I hope to see all you guys in the beta soon. Let's play. Let's pop off. And you too, chat. I want to see you guys in the beta soon. From this stream, we'll be back soon, but sign off, signing off from these guys. Thank you very much, gang, and see you soon for another Group Up podcast. Nice All beards, right. gentlemen. Nice beards. Thanks for having us again. See you guys later.